And you won't be put in a chokehold every time you fill up because you can also get the best fuel economy. This is the future. This is the new F-150. And now you save more. Get 0% financing for 60 months plus another grand. Only at your local Ford dealer. Castrol Syntec has been reformulated for better performance under the hood. So it's a two mile track, so 200 laps, 400 miles. The Auto Club 400 powered by Coca-Cola. Kevin Harvick, who had the rally to finish sixth last week, hoping for a strong finish today. Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers in the Hollywood Hotel as Jeff Gordon starts in row 15 along with Dale Earnhardt Jr. And of course, Jeff Gordon does have a win this year. Let's talk about uh, Harvick. Not a yep. lot of people talking, but you think he has a good chance of winning today's race? I think he's going to be real strong. I think also he ran Saturday's race. So that'll give him a big advantage, I think, of trying to figure this racetrack out and be able to know, make the right air pressure adjustments early on. Because even though it, you know, it was a 500 mile race a year ago, these 400 miles, you've got to make big adjustments. You've got to be real aggressive, I think, on pit road to keep up with what's going on. Talking about adjustments, Darrell Waltrip talked about how Steve Letard, his first year as crew chief with Dale Earnhardt, Junior, he starts with Gordon in row 15. They have to make up some ground here. Yeah, and I think right now you see Steve Letart talking to Dale Jr., letting him know what he's thinking early on, what to expect in the race car, because the racetrack's going to be green, Chris. And what I mean, no yeah, rubber but, on okay. it. They've got to lay some rubber down. The car's going to go through some transitions. This is where you got to keep your driver calm. That's what Steve Letart will do well with him today. How long does it take to get the rubber down that you... Uh... I think 20, 25 laps okay. will be, oh, we'll start you know, see some of the changes. By the time we get to the first pit stop, they'll have a pretty good direction on what to do. This race reduced from 500 miles to 400. Does that benefit? benefit any particular or hinder any particular driver or team. I do think it hurts some guys because they maybe don't have the engineering skills, but I look for guys like Chad Knauss and Jimmy Johnson to do well because they know how to make what kind of adjustments and how quickly. Jimmy Johnson has dominated this track. Juan Pablo Montoya is the guy on the pole up front with Denny Hamlin. And we're getting ready to go racing. We're glad you're along for the ride here on Fox. Race fans, it is time for those most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command is your Grand Marshal, star of the new Fox series Breaking In, premiering Wednesday night, April 6th on Fox, film and TV star Christian Slater. Gentlemen, start your engines. <laughs> Will it be Junior's time or Jimmy's day once again? We're 50 miles from Hollywood. Darrell Walter, Claire McReynolds, and Mike Joy have the call of today's race coming up. Rain this morning, but clearing skies and the engines have fired on pit road. We are ready to race in Southern California. Welcome to the Auto Club 400, powered by Coca-Cola. Even a surf woody to lead them around as we get ready to race. It hasn't been sunny Southern California, but that's okay. Everybody's got their jackets on and they are ready to rock. Hi, Mike Joy with Larry McReynolds and Daryl Waltrip. This track surface is wider than Interstate 10. It is faster than almost anywhere we go, Daryl. Why is it so difficult to drive? Well, it, you, you hit the nail on the head. And like we said in the pre-race show, you've only got 14 degrees of banking here. So when you drive that car off into the corner here at 200 miles an hour, then you hit some of those uh, strips where the uh, sealer is, the car wants to slip slide around. And I'm telling you, you got your hands full when you try to get that thing off in there and get it up off the corner at these high speeds. So it's hard to drive because it's so fast. Wow. This race is 20% shorter than last year, Larry. So that means 40% more intense and less time to make those adjustments and uh, I think everything's just going to get a little tighter. And that's a huge key because I promise you these drivers will need adjustments today because we go back to yesterday, everyone was searching for the handling at the speeds that DW is talking about. You're going around this two-mile racetrack. The other concern on everybody's part, especially that driver, is that engine. Engine durability is huge here because of the speed, the RPM that you carry, and it never gets a rest even though the race has been shortened to 400 miles. Yeah, last year, more engine failures and more blown in or more uh, pit road penalties for speeding than anywhere we go on the entire tour. Hmm. Let's get downstairs and uh, catch up with our NASCAR on Fox All Star pit crew, beginning with Matt Yoakum. 
Mike's strategy has definitely changed for young Joey Logano. A race day engine change forces Logano from row two to the back row. Now, what causes concern for the JGR engine guys? This is the fifth straight race. They've had an engine issue, and it's the fifth different type of engine issue. Logano told me they're probably going to have to roll the dice with some pit strategy early on for track position, so keep an eye for some unique pit strategy here in the 20 pit. Steve Burns. Well, Matt, thank you. Larry Mack was right. A lot of teams looking for the handle yesterday in practice, and Kyle Busch in the 18 was no different. Now, his crew chief, Dave Rogers, told me that they have gotten used to working through adversity this year, that Kyle has matured greatly as a driver. Now, in terms of the race car, they did get the car better. Kyle was very fast on the bottom, but Dave Rogers thinks they're going to need to run on the top. So. Again, their work on that race car will be a moving target, Dick Bergren. Well, Kevin Harvick has never won a Sprint Cup race here at California, but he's come close. Last spring, he finished second, almost won it, and might have done so had he not bounced off the wall in the final laps, chasing the leader. He's got a terrific car, so good that when practice ended yesterday, they put a blanket over it. No further adjustments. Harvick told me moments ago he expects to win today. Chris Devota. Well, coming into this race, the points leader is shaking his head. Kurt Busch and team are off. Something has been missing all weekend. So much so that in happy hour final practice, they threw just about everything at their race car. They think it's better, but still they know they may have to make some aggressive, risky moves, meaning Kurt Busch could be the equivalent of the Hollywood stuntman today. Mike. Thanks, Krista. Ready to race in Southern California. Let's show you how they'll line up today. Juan Paulo Montoya has his sixth cup pole, third straight for his team here. Denny Hamlin, first top 10 start of the season. Joey Logano, third top 10 start here. And Regan Smith, best average starting position of everybody. David Reagan, Tony Stewart in the third row. Jeff Burton and Kyle Busch, who got his first cup win here for Rick Hendrick in 05. Brian Newman and Mark Martin, the 98 winner. Matt Kenseth, three wins at this racetrack. Jamie McMurray, five top tens here. Darrell, let's, uh, let's go to the front row. Denny Hamlin, it's a DW. Got a copy, buddy? Hey, man, great qualifying running. I think that's just what you needed. Is this, uh, is this the day we can turn it all around? I think so. I mean, we, uh, the one thing our car has had is speed uh, all weekend. We struggled a little bit on the long run, but I think we've gotten that a little bit better. So, obviously, starting up front is where we want to be. We just got to work it all out, put a whole 400 miles together now. How's the track look out there, Denny? I know you're just uh, getting around in three and four there, but how's the track looking? The great race. Um, I was out here while they were cutting some grooves on Friday, and amazing to see how that water pressure builds up under the surface. So it's uh, looking good. We're going to be racing here in a few minutes. All right, my friend. Have a good day, and uh, and go get you one. You need it. Step four. Denny Hamlin, who will start yep. second. This race is brought to you by Budweiser, the beer that starts with full flavor and ends with a crisp, fast finish. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. A new distance at Auto Club Speedway, 400 miles. It'll take 200 laps. You see right there, pit road speed. We'll be talking about that a lot. 55 miles per hour, the fuel window for Sunoco race fuel. 36 to 40 laps to the rear, all for engines. Another Joe Gibbs problem this morning. Changed that about halfway through the morning before pushing to the grid on Joey Logano's 20 car. They were a little slow firing off uh, from pit road because Ken Schrader's VA Mortgage Company Ford was a little slow to get started. And uh, I saw some smoke from the hitters of Kyle Busch's car as he fired up, uh, but that did dissipate after that engine ran for about a minute. So all 43 cars are out there and rolling and ready to go. Yeah, I don't think that's a problem. Sometimes they'll do that when they set a while. Ready to race in Fontana. Let's uh, take a look at today's UPS logistics of the race. First, don't get a false sense of security because this track is so wide and there are so many grooves and you have so many opportunities to try different lines and run different places because that leader just might get away from you. 
And I think for the drivers and for the crew chiefs, since this is the first time in the spring we've went to, from 500 to 400 miles, it's almost starting a new chapter. I look at those trends the night before the race. Two of my trends had to be adjusted because it's no longer a 500-mile race. And we've already documented this. There are a lot of speeding, road, uh, speeding penalties on pit road here. Don't get a ticket. And let, let me tell you, fans, at home, when you're going down the interstate and you come off the interstate and you've been running really, really fast, how hard is it to get your car slowed down when you get to the top of the ramp? These guys are coming off the corner 180 miles an hour down to 55. That's where you get in trouble. 12 penalties for speeding, either entering or leaving the pits in last year's race, most of any race. Mike, you were talking about Kenny Schrader's number 32 car. He's on pit road here during the pace lap, so something definitely not right for Kenny Schrader. Now this is Tony Stewart, and Tony's got that piece of tape. You see, he's going to adjust it just a little bit. He likes for that piece of tape to be straight ahead when he's going down the straightaway. And you'll see Junior same way. He's going to change his steering wheel. You see the red mark on the steering column down there. He uh, had that off a notch. Drivers are really peculiar in particular about the angle and where those spokes are in the steering wheel. Something to keep track of 400 uh, miles from now is the curse of the lap one leader. The driver who leads lap one at this track in 21 races has never gone to victory lane. Here's today's F-150 Ford EcoBoost track facts. Matt Kenseth started 31st, 25th, and 24th in his three wins here. You don't have to start up front to get to victory lane. Ford has won more than half or almost half of the Auto Club Cup races, 10 out of 21. Auto Club Speedway, the 15th track in California to host an event in NASCAR's Premier Series. The first was at Carroll Speedway in Gardena in 1951. It'd be kind of hard to tell your driver not to lead the first lap, wouldn't it, Larry? <laughs> I know. Lay back, lay back a little bit. I think it's time to try to break that streak. <laughs> Ready to go green on a blustery day here. Ingenuity. Most engine failures last year of any race. So uh, keep that power plant intact. Don't be foolish to run out of gas here. It could be a long coast around to pit road. Make sure you get it all full. And 205, that is the entry speed to turn one for many of these cars, and that's as fast as any place we go. So let's get going. All these fans, I love it when they're all standing down here. They're looking up, up here at us. Uh, they want to, they, they're waiting for those words. Sugar Ray Leonard throws the green flag on the field. Boogity, boogity, boogity! Let's go racing California style, boys! Four wide, turn two. Boy, Kyle Busch in this 18 car, what a run he got off turn two. This is a backup car. Had a crash in practice on Friday before he even completed a lap. He's about to pass the outside pole sitter, Denny Hamlin. And this is where Kyle Busch is really he's good everywhere, but these restarts and starts, he is the master of getting through the traffic when he's back in the field on these restarts. Started at the top, went to the bottom, down in the carpool lane. Here he comes. He and Hamlin almost trade paint for second place as Montoya leads the first lap. And boy, right now around this racetrack, Larry, you know, with that rain we've had and everything, you're just not real sure about the grip level. And where Kyle is running, I mean, that is just taking a lot of chance this early in the race. And I'm sure Hamlin's probably saying, why is he racing me so hard right now? <laughs> because that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> because he can. Regan Smith is the second place car. As they jostle for third, David Reagan in the sixth. Denny Hamlin scoots out. He'll be second as they come to the line behind Montoya. Smith trying to hold on to third with Kyle Busch right on the bottom. Does Busch get third? He does. See, Jeff Burton in that 31 car had a great qualifying run, qualified back in the seventh position. Jeff Burton just needs something positive and good to happen here today. Matt following Tony Stewart. See back there, the third, the green car, Kyle Busch, he cleared all those cars, and now he's eased up in front of uh, David Reagan there in the third spot. So the battle's at fourth where Jeff Burton sits. Three wide there with Regan Smith in the middle. 
I think that Trevor Bain's been yeah. in the wall. I think he got into the wall down there in the middle of three and four. Oh, yeah. yeah. Michael McDowell right behind him. Quite a bit of damage to the right side of that car. That's just what I was saying about the grip level. He's up here in no man's land right now. It's just not a lot of grip there. And you can see car just in a slide all the way to the wall. See all that dirt and dust and everything that's just from not being used yet. No caution as the rookie Trevor Bain has been in the fence at turn four. Not far from where Kyle Busch hit it on the opening lap of practice Friday. And these are the kind of mistakes that rookies make. Early in a race, you know, up there where you really don't need to be. And uh, these are the kind of things that really hurt you when you don't have the experience that some of the other older, more experienced drivers have. Casey Kane has gained 10 spots in the early running of this race from 22nd to 12th. Kane ahead of Jamie McMurray with Carl Edwards to the inside. And let me just follow up on Bain. It's not that he he, he has the talent, but you got to know that right now you don't want to be that high on this racetrack because it's dirty. Kane's teammate Brian Vickers in the silver car to the inside. McMurray hooks up with him. Denny Hamlin for the lead underneath Montoya can't clear him in the middle of the corner as Juan gets a great launch off turn two. It's hard. Smoker turn one Larry. One car is going up. And sadly that is the 37 of Tony Raines. We stay green right Boy, now. I don't know Larry he had a little fire up under the hood there. I think it'll go out but saw some fire coming out from under the hood. Matt Kenseth moves to fourth ahead of his Roush Fenway teammate David Reagan. Kenseth started ninth. Be just a little bit concerned about oil in turns one and two. That was a pretty big explosion on the 37 car. I guess uh, NASCAR's got people down there that's monitoring that. You know what I was going to say? It's just hard to complete that pass when you're on the bottom because that that driver on the top of the racetrack, he's able to keep the momentum up. It's just hard to finally clear it. There is Clint Boyer in eighth. And for the lead, here comes Hamlin. Larry, I got to believe it, that 11 car, when they qualified that well, and that's been one of the things they've really struggled with, that car's got to be pretty darn good uh, based on his qualifying run and what we're seeing right here. They got a good car today. Because yeah, you and I have discussed a lot, we feel like that's been one of his Achilles heel, Denny Hamlin, is qualifying in the back of the pack, got him in trouble at Bristol last week. New leader is that Joe Gibbs Toyota for Denny Hamlin. Montoya gets right to his rear bumper as they go off to turn number three and Tony Raines has made it back to pit road so no caution flag for Raines. Yeah and all clear down there where the engine blew no oil so we're good to go. You could see Montoya in the 42 car dip down on the apron through three and four. There's a lot of grip there but it just bogs the car down. Denny Hamlin was able to keep it wound up on the high side. Hunter Green for the first eight laps of the Auto Club 400, powered by Coke. Can anything slow down Denny Hamlin? Find out only on NASCAR on Fox. Twelve laps complete at Auto Club Speedway. Denny Hamlin leading the new second place car is his Joe Gibbs Racing teammate, Kyle Busch. And, and it's hard to believe this is the 20th anniversary of Joe Gibbs Racing. This is the only track on the Sprint Cup circuit that Joe Gibbs Racing does not have a win in the Sprint Cup series. Third is Juan Paulo Montoya. The fifth straight race that Montoya has led here. He's up in the top groove. Kyle down on the bottom, which has proven a little bit quicker here over the last few laps. That's where you'd like to run right around the bottom if the car doesn't if you don't bind the car up too much down there and slow it down. On our pole sitter here's Steve Burns. Mike Juan Pablo Montoya saying the car is just a little bit free on entry free on exit of the corner and just a little bit snug in the middle. But crew chief Brian Patty saying that he's running competitive lap times. Well, and, and he's a, right now, Steve, he's about a tenth and a half off of what Denny Hamlin in 11 car, but he's still hanging there in the third spot right now. You know, Larry, week in and week out, I know people say, well, these guys are just out there riding around. 
folks, trust me, no time that you're on a racetrack are you just riding around. Watch how hard this man's working. What he's doing there, he's going off that corner about 200 miles an hour. He's hitting those black strips and the car wants to skip. And you got to work that wheel every time it hits one of those strips to keep it from bouncing around or slamming into the wall. He is as tense as he can possibly be, as focused as you could be at anything you've ever done. I don't care if you play golf, football, whatever. He's got his whole mind, body, and soul right straight ahead, keeping his car inside those retaining walls. Fourth place, Matt Kenseth and Jeff Burton, former teammates, going at it here. Dick Bergman. Well, Kenseth started in the 11th position, Mike, worked his way up to where he is right now in fourth spot. But the big story with this team is that Kenseth has won here three times with three different crew chiefs. His current crew chief, Jimmy Fennick, has won here twice as a crew chief with two different drivers. Fennick and Kenseth have never won here together, maybe today. Well, um, nobody probably wants to win any more than Matt Kenseth because it's been over two years since he won a race. It was right here in February of 2009. See how hard he's working that wheel? I mean, it just it just takes a lot of effort when those strips. And watch this. These guys are coming off the corner. Whoa. Bit of convergence there. Oh, yeah. And that's what happens. We are on the bottom. You got to come up. You can't stay on the bottom. You got to come up and use a whole racetrack. It's all right if there's anybody out there. Martin Truex dropped to the bottom in the 56 and prevailed in that group. Regan Smith continuing to battle Ryan Newman. And David Rudeman in the double O gets a little breathing room. Clint Boyer on the move. Krista, he's gained 10 spots. And he told us yesterday he would be fast today. They started 17th, but they knew they had a fast car after final practice. They actually came into this race doing something a little bit different using Paul Menard, their teammate setup. Shane Wilson, the crew chief, said they like it. They stuck with it. Well, what's good about using Paul Menard's setup, it's a fresh setup because remember, Paul Menard was at Richard Petty Motorsports. So I'm sure that, that Paul Menard and his team, Slugger Labby, they brought new ideas to Richard Childress Racing. And my experience has been with crew chiefs. They don't want to use somebody else's ideas. They want to use their own. It takes, you have to swallow your pride, put your ego aside and say, look, you're running better than I am. Help me. Martin Truex has gained the most positions from his starting spot 13. Dale Jr. up 12. J.J. Ailey, Joey Logano, and Carl Edwards among the big movers. Remember, Joey Logano was one of the ones we talked about as his two teammates up here, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, are fighting for the lead. Joey Logano qualified third, had to go to the rear of the field because of an engine change this morning. Well, Larry, when we go to Detroit, we know that, you know, a lot of the guys put extra effort into Michigan. When we come out here to California, these Toyota teams, they put extra effort into this race because Torrance is just right down the street, and that's headquarters for the Toyota guys. Bush and Hamlin, Kyle Bush on the bottom. That's been the fast lane for him. While most of the drivers seem to prefer the high groove up in turns one and two. Well, just, I mean, wow. look at him sliding through the corner there. And again, that's about 180 miles an hour right there. Bush does not get the lead. First car out of the race will be Todd Bodine. He's taking his number 60 to the garage. What you'll find is the race wears on. These guys will start, they'll say, okay, I'm good high, running the high line one and two, better running the low line in three and four. They will start to move around as the tires wear down. Denny Hamlin leads his teammate Kyle Busch, Juan Pablo Montoya, Jeff Burton, and Clint Boyer after 20 laps. The Auto Club 400 on Fox is powered by Coca-Cola. Open a Coke and enjoy the race. And sponsored by the new 2011 Ford F-150, built for tough. And by Sprint, proud sponsor of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. 24 laps complete in the 22nd Sprint Cup race to be held at Auto Club Speedway, and we have a new leader. Kyle Busch, who won yesterday's race on a strategy call, went to the high side and got had the, a sharp look at Denny Hamlin, crossed under, took the lead. Got the momentum, and then he had a, you know, then he could cut it to the bottom. Slingshot by, that's a good move. He was not the dominant car yesterday, but on the final pit stop, when everyone else took 
four tires. Kyle got two, and it was the winning call. You know, I've been watching Brian Vickers yeah. in this 83 car. He's just started back in the 17th position. Now he's up here battling Clint Boyer in the 33 for the fifth spot. Brian has been moving forward ever since they dropped the green flag. Remember, May a year ago, Brian Vickers was told, you can't race right now. You've got blood clots. He had surgery in July, and here he is making his fifth start of 2011. Well, he moved to the very, very top where you see him right now right on the get-go almost. Right after Trevor Bain kind of dusted that top groove off, Vickers started using it. Behind that group, Matt Kenseth, Martin Truex, and the ninth place car, Carl Edwards. Steve? Mike, he's pretty happy with his car. He started 18th, as you said, up into the top 10. Now he's really keeping an eye on the guys in front of him, but he's asking his spotter, Jason Hadleski, to look backwards. Keep your breath and what's behind me. Folks, it's a pretty hard drive in, you know. I'll let you know. And talking about his race car, he says his car is just a little bit tight in the center and just a little bit loose off. Pretty happy with his race car, guys. Sounds like he just wants a, a comfortable place to ride right now, uh, that he doesn't want anybody sneaking up on him. Probably could go a little harder if he had to. That's what it sounds like. So the fellow right behind him is Tony Stewart in 10th. Stewart started third, Matt. Mikey had dropped all the way to 13, climbed back into the top 10. Stewart told me had a lot of confidence coming into the race because his race car was so impressive, especially on exit, but it's just the opposite today. Loose on entry and wicked loose, almost wrecking loose on exit. It's starting to come to him, but we are nearing halfway through this run, so his team already looking at what adjustments to make on that first stop. Thanks, Matt. Based on your votes, the Pizza Hut fan favorite today is Jeff Gordon, who is running in 17th, and that is 10 positions better than where he started the day. Like tighter in the front, not in the back. Careful. Bust all the way, bud. Bust five more. To follow up on what Matt Yoakum was saying there, the good thing about this long run, we've run 28 laps. We're about eight to 10 laps away from what's gonna be a green flag pit stop. You have a pretty good idea of what you've got now, but we just talked about Brian Vickers in that 83. He has found a groove around this racetrack right now. Yeah, you know what, it, it kind of worries me a little bit. He's running great right now, but think about last week when Martin Truex found that high line at Bristol. And man, he drove up there and took the lead and kind of drove off from everybody. But as soon as that high line rubbers up a little bit, you may have to find a better, you know, another place to run. Dick Bergeron. Well, Vickers is very happy with the behavior of his race car, as he should well be, Mike. He said that it's pretty close to just the way they want to have this race car, and they're going to be pinning in less than 10 laps to put some fuel in it. He has tried to take it relatively easy on this run so as not to abuse their tires so they can get a good read on them on that pit stop. Thanks, Dick. Vickers running quicker than the leader that last lap, as was Jeff Burton and Martin Truex, the fastest car last time by. 29 complete. Kyle Busch, your leader. Green flag pit stops began at lap 32. Most of the Fords came in, the last of those Edwards who just pitted. Uh, there's your leader, Clint Boyer. We're still under green as we have been from the start of the race. Second time by lap 33. Uh, that's when the leaders came in, both Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin. And after that, it was wholesale. Everybody to pit road for four tires and fuel. Well, those Gibbs cars, Larry, they seem to be really working in harmony today. They're working together. They pitted together. We've got two great race cars today. Jimmy Johnson picks up the lead as Montoya and McMurray complete their stops. Paul Menard comes in out of third. Krista. Clint Boyer really happy with the balance of his race car. No adjustments other than air pressure. Four tires, but no wrenches in the back. They are really happy with how the car has not fallen off on that long run. Yeah, the problem when one driver hit pit road under green because you give up about two seconds on the stopwatch over the course of a long run, you can't be far behind that first group of drivers that hits pit road. The only two drivers who have not yet stopped are Jimmy Johnson and J.J. Yaley. And here comes the defending Sprint Cup champion to pit road. This will probably hand the lead back to Kyle Busch. Matt. 
and Jimmy Smokes to a stop in his pit box. He was saying that he was almost parking the race car in the center of the corner because it was so tight. Having to try to come to a stop to get the car to turn. Major chassis adjustment for Johnson. The car also too, too tight on exit. And remember, Mike, right now, write that down, folks. That's, that's laps in the bank. Stayed out a little bit longer. That could pay off as we go down the road here and it stays up under green. It can also pay off for J.J. Yaley, the uh, former sprint car driver out of Phoenix, Arizona, because, Larry, there is such a fight to be in the top 35 because after we leave California, it'll be this year's owner point systems that determine the qualifying exemptions beginning next week. And this is a driver, J.J. Yaley, in the 46. He's qualified for every race in 2011. Been a tough weekend for him. They had engine issues right before qualifying. They didn't even get to make a qualified attempt. The car wouldn't even leave at pit road. Started dead last, leading laps at Auto Club Speedway. He'll be in in the next lap or two. Kyle Busch seven seconds back. And here's Yaley peeling off to come to pit road. Hope he's not out of gas. <laughs> he's going awfully slow down that back straightaway. He's out. He may have stretched her just a little too far. 36 and a half laps. And that's all. But he should make it all the way back. He's in the middle of three and four now. Kyle Busch had a two second lead. Uh, he and Denny Hamlin over the field. Now it's three seconds. The Auto Club 400 on Fox is sponsored by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. There's Chris Economaki in the center of that shot. As Sandy Reid calls the race. Darrell Waltrip celebrating a championship with RJR's Jerry Long. Happy day there. Sad news this week that Economaki's National Speed Sport News, the authoritative voice of motorsports for what, 60, 70 years? They have ceased publication as of this week's issue. The weekly newspaper market for auto racing, not what it once was. Yeah, in 1977, I won the race at Darlington, and Chris Economaki uh, interviewed me in Victory Circle, and what a thrill that was. Wow, Darrell. <laughs> He was the man on pit road for ABC and CBS for many, many years. Here is Carl Edwards pit stop. Look at it as they go around to the left side. Couldn't had a lug nut still hung on the left rear tire and that's precious seconds while everybody else is out there going full speed. Carl was ninth and is now 11th. Here's Jimmy Johnson trying to get to pit road. That's Ken Schrader just ahead. And you may ask, why didn't he just go up on the racetrack? The rule is when you leave pit road, you have to stay on the apron through one and two. There's no speed limit, but you have to run right where he was at. Right. I said get to pit road. I meant getting off pit road and right. back on to the racetrack. Yeah, you can't jump in the, tra up in the track too soon. There's a point over where you're allowed to go up. Jimmy Johnson was 13th before pit stops began. He is now 17th. And Larry Mack, you talk about the number of positions or Mike that Carl Edwards lost. The most important thing was he lost six seconds compared to the 18, the 83, and the 11 on pit road. And that's valuable time around this racetrack. Just simply because the left rear tire changer left a lug nut hanging on the left rear tire. Montoya, the pole sitter. Good straight race he has led here. And Martin Truex, who started 26th is now fifth. You know, pit, pit crew and pit stop problems, they, they, they can plague you. And it seems like once they get a hold of a team or even an organization, it's hard to get rid of them because all of a sudden you start trying too hard. You start trying to do it faster, do it better, and it just bites you. 40 laps complete, the front four all driving Toyotas and led by Kyle Busch. The Auto Club 400 on Fox, powered by Coca-Cola, is sponsored by the Auto Club. We're always with you. By AT&T, rethink possible. And by Dodge. Dodge, never neutral. 
Time for an AT&T race break along with Jeff Hammett, Chris Myers in the Hollywood Hotel here in Southern California. Six leaders, seven lead changes, and Kyle Busch has led the most laps at 16, just ahead of Denny Hamlin. And it was back on the second lap when Denny Hamlin made a move on Kyle Busch. And on the radio, Jeff, you were listening to Kyle, and he wasn't happy with his teammate. No, he wasn't. He wasn't happy at all because, I mean, Darrell Walter talked about the momentum around this racetrack. And his, you know, Denny Hamlin cut his teammate off, Kyle Busch. Running down low, kind of pinched him down, going into turn one, slowed his momentum down. That really hurt him early part of the race. Otherwise, he would have led a lot more laps already by now. And again, in a backup car. Meanwhile, the guy who's won here more than anyone else, Jimmy Johnson, five times he's won this race, 14th. Now, with all those wins, he never won when he started outside the top 10. He started 16th today. Well, I don't think it's really going to matter to these guys. I mean, they're methodically going through the right kind of adjustments. Hopefully, on this last pit stop, they were able to improve the car a little bit as far as the long run. It looked like he gave up a lot of time, latter part of that uh, run as far as going into the pit stop cycle. So let's see how they did as far as Chad Knauss making the right adjustments. Meanwhile, Dale Earnhardt Jr., his 400th consecutive start today. He's 19th. Now, compared to where he started at 30th, he's worked his way up. He said that his crew, his team, each week has made the car better so he can be a more aggressive driver. Well, I think he's made a good start so far, Chris, as far as Dale Jr. is concerned. But the fact that they've now got an injured pit crew member during that pit stop, I think it hurt him coming on and off pit road. He lost some valuable ground there. It may hurt him throughout the rest of this afternoon because, to me, pit stops, whether they're caution flags or green flag stops, are going to be very much important as far as the result of this number 88. And from that pit crew of juniors, Joe Slingerland uh, suffering the hamstring injury. Certainly hope he's okay. Let's go back and listen into that audio lap two. Kyle Busch talking about Denny Hamlin. Let's the 11. Appreciate it. Thanks for being a teammate. Lap one. A little sarcasm there. A little sarcasm right there. Early in the race, for those two guys to be racing that hard, I think it really frustrated Kyle Busch. But again, I think he's put it behind him. He's gotten around the 11 car, and he's basically showing the way around this racetrack. <laughs> the kinder, gentler Kyle. Denny Hamlin lost nine positions and points the last week when he finished 33rd at Bristol. Time to check in on the AT&T fastest pit crew award and the season standings here. AT&T wants to know what you think. Text the car number for the pit crew you think will average the least amount of time on pit road today. The text number 234567. AT&T, the nation's fastest mobile broadband network. Let's rejoin Daryl, Larry, and Mike. Mike? Well, thanks, Chris. I'm sure Denny Hamlin was as surprised as anyone that Kyle Busch, who started eighth, was alongside the outside pole sitter on the first lap of the race. Well, I said they were working in harmony. I didn't say it was perfect harmony. <laughs> Two-part harmony. That's right. I tell you what, he may also be surprised is Brian Vickers in the 83 car who started back in the 17th position. Martin Trex Jr. in the 56 started 26, eating his rear bumper up right now. Those two cars have, have been on that high line oh, since early, early in the race, and they have really, really made it work. You know, people ask me all the time about Kyle Busch and what makes him so great. There are some drivers that they know how to drive a car, and that's all they They don't know a lot about a car. There are other drivers that know a lot about the car. Maybe they're not that great a driver. But Kyle Busch knows both. He knows his race car. He knows what he wants in it. He knows what he wants it to do, and he's a great driver. That makes him very, very hard to beat. Here are two of the four Toyotas at the front of the field as Kyle Busch comes up to lap Robbie Gordon from nearby Orange, California. Sponsifier is back for 2011, and the winning designer this year gets a personal visit from their favorite driver. Go online for all new ways to create, customize, and share your designs. You know, one thing, Larry, when you run that high line like that, you don't have to worry about anybody passing you on the outside. <laughs> no, you don't have to worry <laughs> about that at all. Clear high. <laughs> Joe Gibbs Racing running 1-2, their best finish here. Bobby Labonte finished second twice at Auto Club Speedway. Kyle Busch out front at 55 laps of the Auto Club 400. Martin Truex Jr., the second place car, 4.8 seconds back. Denny Hamlin, 5.3, Brian Vickers, 5.9, and Tony Stewart. Seven and a half seconds off pace, as you see at the top of your screen on the crawl. I need to fix something from last week. <clears throat> Here we go. Martin is from Mayetta, New Jersey, where the state flower is 
the common violet. Oh boy. Not the concrete Jersey barrier as I animated last week. Sorry to everybody in Jersey and thanks to all of you who wrote. Well on Twitter. At all wall trip. You took a lot of heat. <laughs> uh, took a lot of heat a lot of places. <laughs> but they do have a lot to pull for with Martin Drex Jr. It looks like he finished sixth at Las Vegas. Now the one thing his last top five finish was almost a year ago when he finished fifth at Martinsville last spring. Let's catch up with our leaders Pitt and Steve. Mike Darrell is right. Kyle Busch is very analytical, very knowledgeable about his race car. On the last pit stop, they've made no adjustments. Kyle Busch just came on the radio and said, when we stop again, do not make a track bar adjustment. Then he went on to say the car is just a little bit snug in the center when he's turning on the top of the racetrack. That's good information. That uh, tells the crew chief, you know, it's giving him some direction. Don't panic and do something that will mess up a good race car. Thanks, Steve. Here's Martin Truex, second place car, four and a half back. He and Denny Hamlin were going at it side by side during the last break, but Hamlin has drifted back to about six seconds off the lead. And, and part of that, too, is how many times, Larry, during the race you say, well, we got to keep up with the track. And uh, at some time, I think a crew chief automatically thinks every time the car comes to pit road, we have got to do something to it to keep up with the track. But I think sometimes you have to be careful doing it on the first stop because the racetrack is going to change. At fifth place, there's Tony Stewart. Matt? Mike Last Falls winner has made big improvement from that first run. The car was wrecking loose on exit. Now he says just a little bit free on exit, making big headway. And I know, DW, you're wondering why they didn't bring that car that could have, would have, should have won Las Vegas here to Auto Club Speedway. And basically, the team says they've got so many new or retooled race cars in the lineup. That race car is not even on the schedule to race anytime soon. They're pretty confident about this first stretch of the season. Well, I, I've always been a believer. When you get one, it'll run. Just ride her till she don't, till you can't run no more. All right, we're looking at Clint Boyer started 15th. He's running six right now. I think this is a classic example of maybe jumping the fence with adjustments. He told his crew a little bit ago, he went too far. But I think part of that may be the racetrack has changed a little bit. And right behind him, Jeff Burton, whose catch heavy is running quicker than the leader right now. Here's our pole sitter, Montoya, 12 and a half seconds back. And Larry, how much of that, how much of some of those changes are based on what we did here in the past? I mean, do you look at your notebook and say, by the third stop of the race or whatever, the track tightened up, the track loosened up. So you have kind of data to go off of? Well, I think it goes back to our UPS logistics. We're starting a new chapter a little bit. We're here a little different time of year as well as just running 400 miles. Plus, we've had rain on two different occasions this weekend. So we started this morning with somewhat of a green racetrack, and it's taken about 50, 60 laps to rubber in or, or rubber up. Now, we're closing in on the record as you look at Kevin Harvick back there in 10th place. Closing in on the record for consecutive green flag laps at the start of this race. Three more, and we'll tie that record. I don't like the looks of that, Larry. That's a lot of debris on the grill of that 18 car. Somebody better be getting his attention. Let's see if he runs up here behind the 21 and gets it. Let's that 21 car suck that right off of there. There, there it goes. Man. Perfect. Goodbye. Steve. Uh, Mike. Mike, I was just going to say, Kyle Busch was aware of that two laps ago. He told his crew that's what he was going to do so that engine wouldn't overheat. Well, Steve, regardless, we're getting within that window again, four, five, six laps before we're going to see cars hitting pit road for their second set of green flag pit stops. Tony Stewart passed Brian Vickers. Vickers gets him back, fourth and fifth at stake here. About eight seconds back of the lead. You know, we talked to Tony Stewart in the pre-race, the guys did, and he was a little concerned about his car on the long run. But I think that, that he had his team make adjustments to this car that's starting to get it good on the long run. That's Landon Castle just ahead of Stewart. He is lapped down. And then Denny Hamlin, who's the third place car. Let's take an inside look at what's happening now in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series brought to you by Sprint and HTC Evo 4G. 
Fastest lap of the race, Denny Hamlin, 181 miles an hour. Back on lap two. Fuel your inner NASCAR fan with live in-car audio and real-time stats available on NASCAR Sprint Cup Mobile and the new HTC Evo 4G only from Sprint at Sprint.com slash speed. Kyle Busch has been out front for 37 laps. And A.J. Allmendinger is the first car to pit road under the second round of green flag stop. Steve? And Mike, his issue is he cannot find any grip. They made adjustments on the last stop, but again, A.J. Allmendinger has been saying pretty much since the drop of the green flag, we need grip. Dick? I'll bet. Now Matt Kenseth had dropped back the car now, not to his liking at all. It's a bit loose off in the corners. It needs more grip. They're going to make substantial changes on this pit stop. David Gilliland's in. Regan Smith on pit road. Travis Quapple. As green flag stops begin for the second time, and we have set a new record for consecutive green flag laps at the start of a cup race here in Fontana. Krista? Regan Smith, who had such a good qualifying effort, has not been having a good race. He's in a very, very loose race car. He had come on the radio and said, boys, I can barely hang on to this car. We're going to have to tighten it up. That is exactly what crew chief Pete Rondo is doing for his driver, Regan Smith, right now. Frank Biffle's in, Matt. And the first run for Biffle, he was fighting free on exit. It was a handful, edgy. Now this pass run, he had to wait for the car to turn in the center of the corner. They were debating about what adjustments the Biff wanted to fix this race car. Chassis, Justin, you see him, good crank there on the left side. He's away. David Reagan, Jamie McMurray, Kurt Busch, Marcus Ambrose in the pit lane, along with Bobby Labonte, David Rudiman, Trevor Bain, and Casey Mears. And Kyle is coming. The leader will pit this time. And you see he had his hand out the window there, waving to people behind him. Right now there's no one, but he was at least uh, remembering to do that. Jimmy Johnson's in. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Matt Kenseth. Man. Casey Kane, Brad Keselowski in the pit lane. Kenseth leaving as Bush is coming in. And everybody's going to follow him to pit road. This is going to be a busy place. As Denny Hamlin's in, Brian Vickers, Krista. Denny Hamlin, they had said they had just gone too far on the change on that last stop, exactly what you were talking about. He said he's just too tight exit, especially under throttle. Steve? But Krista, Kyle Busch is in. They've already made a small air pressure adjustment, very small chassis adjustment. He likes his car, saying it's just a little bit snug. Gas man Tom Lampy has been working extra hours to solidify the fueling issues. Good stop for the 18. Boyer Edwards Newman in. Here's Logano. Jeff Gordon getting service. Got a car slow down the back over there on the apron. I think he'll make it to pit road. Robbie Gordon in the seven. Krista? Martin Truex is in and he loves his race car. On the start of this run, he said it was way too loose under throttle, but right now they're not making any major changes at all. Matt? A small air pressure change for the 31 of Burton on the first stop. Then he said the car was just slinging the back end around. Cloud cover over the racetrack. A lot of drivers talking about, wedge adjustment, talking about how their race car changed dramatically this past run. Tony Stewart, the new leader, will come to pit road this time. Mark Martin gets his stop completed. And one thing you don't, you know, you make minor adjustments under green. You don't have time to do a whole lot of major changing on the car. Air pressure, something minor, because you don't want to spend a lot of extra time in the pits. Matt? Tony Stewart pulls to a stop, Mike, and making steps, each segment, making the race car better and better. Small adjustments, the last stop, and this stop as well, as Jeff Gooch Patterson from Escondido, California, kicks that tire out of the way, tops him off the fuel, he's away. Now, I like, it was interesting to see that Patterson was not only fueling the car, but he put the wrench in for the adjustment, which was then made by another crew member later in the stop. A lot of multitasking going on here. This big gooch could jack the car, gas the car, probably change the tires. One speeding ticket issued on this round of pit stops, Jeff Burton. Hard to overcome it, these many long green flag runs. 69 laps and two pit stops complete in the Auto Club 400.
the Auto Club 400 on Fox, powered by Coca-Cola, is sponsored by Pizza Hut. Don't wait for the last lap. Order now to get your favorite pizzas at low prices. Welcome back to the Auto Club 400 on Fox. 73 laps complete, all green. We've set a record for consecutive green laps at the start of a cup race in California. Kyle Busch is the first of 25 cars on the lead lap and one of eight leaders who have changed the lead 10 times. No caution flags. And how much can a pit road penalty hurt you? Jeff Burton was in sixth place when he was too fast entering pit road. He is about to go one lap down to Kyle Busch. After going through, he's in 26th place. As the caution comes out, the first one of the day for debris at turn three. And that sigh of relief just came from Jeff Burton in that 31 car. Sure did. He was just ahead of the leader, so gets to come around behind the pace car and stays on the lead lap. I like that visor that uh, Kurt Busch is wearing. Uh, you skiers wear that shade a lot. It increases contrast on what would otherwise look like a smooth surface. Good for cloudy days. Well, he's having a sort of a dim day, so he needs that shield today because things have not gone his way yet. And a happy birthday wish to one of your toughest adversaries, Daryl. Cale Yarborough turned 72 today. Oh, short man. <laughs> he's a good one. One of only two drivers in NASCAR to have won a cup race on his birthday. Cale did it twice at North Wilkesboro in 1977 and at Atlanta in 1983. The other driver to do it is leading this race. Now with that caution coming out, remember we're six, eight to ten laps since all these teams made green flag pit stops. You never pass up an opportunity to come to pit road to get Sunoco fuel for sure. I think we'll see a mixed bag on the tires. I think most of our guys, most of the drivers will go with four tires, but I think we'll see a little bit of rolling of the dice. Some will try just two right sides. Regan Smith gets the free pass on this caution. And next week we go to the paperclip, the half mile that thinks it's a super speedway, Martinsville, Virginia. What a great race place where racing is truly a contact sport. That's next Sunday on Fox. Here they come to pit road, Dick. And Brian Vickers is having the best day he's had, Mike, since returning from the medical issues he suffered from last year. This is an experienced, solid crew that's going to work on the car, but Vickers goes into the pit much further than he should have. That will have hurt him. Krista. Martin Truex still happy with his race car, commented this morning that this is the best inter the intermediate program has been for this race team. You see him working on the right side, also coming around. It's a four-tire change for Martin Truex. Steve? And Krista, Kyle Busch slides to a stop. Jeff Bender, the jack man, gets the left side up in the air. No changes to the 18. Kyle said, I don't want to do anything to it. They come off pit road. Ryan Newman is first off, but he won't be the leader. His boss, Tony Stewart. Uh, did not stop. Hmm. Well, Tony you... was the last, Tony Stewart, the 14, was the last car to come to pit road. Only had six laps on his tires. Stewart stays out. Interesting strategy here. Hmm. The Auto Club 400 on Fox, powered by Coca-Cola, is sponsored by Toyota. By Sprint, proud sponsor of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. And by Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Goodyear, more driven. 77 laps complete, working the first caution of the day. This one for debris in turn three. And on the caution, every single car on the lead lap came to pit road but one. Why did Tony Stewart stay out, Matt? Mike, there was some debate in the Stewart camp whether to hit pit road or not. And one of those reasons was due to the fact they were concerned about maybe they didn't get the car totally full of fuel on the last stop. Here's some of that conversation about their strategy for now and for the rest of the race. If they come, bring it in here for fuel only. If they do that, might as well stay out then. Okay, 10 4, stay out, stay out. That's what he did. He'll start side by side with his teammate. He just gave a wave to Ryan Newman. Spring training ends Tuesday, and that means America's pastime returns to Fox next Saturday. It's America's pastime, and it's back. And there's a drive, hit deep to right field. It's out of here. Takes the cut. Diving play. You have got to.
to be kidding me. What a shot. How about that? The Giants are world champions. Fox Saturday Baseball. That's the lineup for Saturday. And, of course, we'll be at Martinsville on Sunday with the Sprint Cup Series. Not that far from here to Dodger Stadium, is it? <laughs> I, I want to go back to Tony Stewart and the 14 deal. You know, they're in a box again because there's a question, is the car full? And now, even if it was full, he's six laps shy of what the competitors go. I just think they've painted themselves into another box. Don't want to throw him under the bus, but Junior Johnson used to say to me, boy, you want to drive that car or you want to run these pits? Third year as a team owner for Tony Stewart. He and Ryan Newman bring them back to green, completing lap 80. Riding with Kurt Busch, whose beloved Cubs open at Wrigley. Robert Redford will throw out the first pitch this week. Boy, this is dicey right here. I mean, uh, get these cars all bunched up. Krista? We told you at the top of the show that Kurt Busch might be making some risky, aggressive moves. They went with right side tires only, knowing that they were so bad buried in the back of the pack, they're just rolling the dice on some track position. Well, if you're bad, that could make it worse. <laughs> I mean, look at them fanned out here, completing the first half after restart, four and five wide. Every driver I read their quotes this week said the most exciting time of the race here is after a restart where we're five wide. And you just saw Brian Vickers whip around the outside of this racetrack, gaining positions two and three at a clip in that silver Toyota. He's powered it up to eighth place and still runs that high line as Truex drops down to the bottom. 80 laps complete, 81 this time with an NASCAR on Fox. Crank it up. Pace. The outside pole sitter in trouble, Krista. Yeah, Denny Hamlin just came on the radio and told crew chief Mike Ford we might be blowing up. We have documented how much engine trouble the Joe Gibbs Racing Camp has had. Mike Ford said, check your gauges. How does it look? Denny said, everything looks fine, but something is definitely wrong. Just remember, Joey Logano in that 20 had to go with the rear of the field after qualifying third. If you go back to Phoenix, Logano had an engine issue. At Vegas, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin has an issue. This is an ongoing saga for Joe Gibbs Racing. Their problem started in January. Remember, they had a catastrophic engine failure on the dyno in their engine room before we ever even started the season. Yeah, they had an explosion and fire uh, that took out two engines, caused a lot of damage, and, and had to be quite a setback for them. Thing there to be concerned about there from the gauges. That's all the vitals are good. Yep. Hmm. But the real concern with the engines here is, is the upper end, the valve springs. That's what we had six engine failures here in this race a year ago, and most of it was valve train issues. Mark Martin on the move in fourth place, Dick. Well, Mark took just two tires on that last pit stop, Mike, and that really helped him. Mark talked to me before the start of the race today and told me he was concerned about tires, particularly the right rear. He ran the preliminary event yesterday and ran the right rear off. He said if he can keep the right rear on the car, he's got a shot to win it today. I really believe that, uh, Doc, because I've been watching Mark. He's been right there, seventh, eighth. Right now, there he is up in fourth. He's got a really good car today. 
84 laps complete. Ryan Newman, the ninth different leader of this race. Here's a look at Casey Kane doing it a little bit. Slideways in that number four top of your screen. Whoa. Eighty-nine laps complete in the Coca Auto Club Five. Four hundred. Five hundred last year. Four hundred this year. Powered by Coca-Cola. Tony Stewart, Kyle Busch, Ryan Newman have been trading the front three spots around. Brian Vickers on the move. Battling Jimmy Johnson for fourth and Martin Truex Jr. in seventh. Those are the quickest cars on the racetrack. Win a legend and meet one too. Enter for a chance to win a new Chevy Camaro SS and a chance to meet Jimmy Johnson at winyourchevy.com now. Johnson passes Vickers. He's back to fourth. Now, have we mentioned uh, Mr. Johnson in the last little bit? No. He seems to be finding his groove. He's about three seconds off the lead as Tony Stewart tries to hold back Kyle Busch. And as Tony Stewart took the lead, he said this. Excuse me, pardon me, coming through. Got tired of watching him, huh? Yeah, yeah, baby. <laughs> Now, you know why he's happy? Because he made that call about staying out, and he's paying that off by getting the lead. But I truly believe what Tony Stewart needs, he's going to need a caution here to get back on sync with everyone else. I think eventually being five to six laps shy, minimum on fuel, short from the rest of the, the drivers, might end up biting him. Kyle Busch retakes the lead. Now his Joe Gibbs racing teammate Danny Hamlin had an engine apparently go sour, but Hamlin did not come to pit road. What's up, Krista? Yeah, at first they thought it was the engine. He checked all his gauges and they sounded great. Mike Ford said anything else, and Denny said this on the radio. Yeah, it's electrical. I hear it. They got the two red lights on the dash, and then all of a sudden it stopped. Like it didn't want to go through the chip. And down here in the pit, Coach Gibbs just arriving, the team getting ready just in case they need to make an ignition switch. They have uh, the pieces and parts ready should Denny need to come back in. Now Hamlin is the last car on the lead lap. He is about 10 seconds from going a lap down. Joe Gibbs Racing has had five engine failures here, most of all teams. Coach, Coach looked like he was standing on the sideline at the Super Bowl and it's fourth and one. And he hadn't really decided what to do yet. Good battle here from 11th on back. Harvick trying to hold off Kurt Busch and Jeff Gordon and Paul Menard in that bright green car at the bottom. And I've got to say, changing just two right side tires on Kurt Busch, the 22 car, uh, it's it's not hurt him that bad yet. Maybe he found what he was looking for, and that's just being somewhat up near the front. Boy, that would be a miracle because they have worked themselves to death on that old car all weekend long. They've changed everything, everything in the steering. Right in the midst of that is your uh, Pizza Hut fan favorite today. Jeff Gordon is running 13th, Matt. Mike still outside the top 10, trying to make his way in. His biggest issue, he keeps telling his team, turn three. He can't run the top, can't run the bottom. The car just too free on initial entry. When you're running the speeds that, like Daryl pointed out at the top of the show, even at the end of the back stretch, close to 200 miles an hour, and that thing's wanting to turn right on you, that's not a good feeling, I would say. Think back to what Tony Stewart said. When you're backing off early to get in the corner, somebody's going to go by and suck your decals right off the side <laughs> of your car. Right. <laughs> At his present pace, Denny Hamlin will go a lap down to Kyle Busch in about four laps from now. The Auto Club 400 Hot Box is powered by Coca-Cola. Open a Coke and enjoy the race. Ontario Motor Speedway was the showplace of the sport when it opened, but it drew its largest ever crowd for a Rolling Stones concert, not for an auto race. It sat for about it sat about three miles to the west of the present California Speedway, and now it's a multi-use commercial development. Kyle Busch leads Tony Stewart by half a second, halfway next time by. Lap 100, 200 miles, crossed flags for halfway.
Sprint users have spoken. Let's ride shotgun with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Brought to you by Sprint and HTC Evo 4G. Let me know what you really need. Now they're well from traffic. Four or five here. Think about it. Feel your inner NASCAR fan with live in-car audio and real-time stats on NASCAR Sprint Cup Mobile and the new HTC Evo 4G, only from Sprint at Sprint.com slash speed. And as I look at uh, Dale Jr. driving his car, earlier in the race, he was taking that right hand and just a constant, steady pull on that steering wheel. Now you can see he's having to really work with the car, trying to get it to go around the corner like he wants it to. Really wiggling that wheel, trying to get the car to go around the turn. Twenty six cars on the lead lap. All of them stopped at lap seventy six except our race leader Tony Stewart who was in the pat, uh, pits seven uh, second place car Tony Stewart. He was in the pits seven laps prior to that. And here's trouble for Riverside California's David Gilliland looks like he has hit the wall. Left front's down. I think he's going to make it to pit road. But back to Tony Stewart. He pitted on lap 69, as you mentioned, and there's the caution. And that is perfect for Tony Stewart because he was with about four or five laps of having to make that green flag pit stop. This puts all drivers back on equal ground as far as their strategy. Second caution of the day. The first was for debris. Uh, still just a little. Ford kind of came to it at the end. It was. But I think it was more the front end was giving up than the back end was getting better. Temple, I'm going to do a little bit of a tweak on your left side pressure here and just let it roll this time to get with that. Yeah. This caution is also a benefit to Denny Hamlin. He'll be the free pass driver. And and, and I kind of like what Darian Grubb, you're looking at here in the, in the shot. I like what he's actually doing. He's asking Tony his opinion. Just like when they stayed out on gas, he asked Tony his opinion. And obviously, they have something worked out to where he really values what Tony wants to do. Just like then. Is that, are you okay with that adjustment? There is the debris on the track from David Gilliland's tire. And the pits will be open now, as we saw. We had a little bit of a dust up at Bristol where Kyle Busch hit the wall and the caution ended up coming out for debris. But NASCAR does not charge a debris caution to any particular driver because often it's too difficult to tell where the debris came from. So in that instance, as this one, the caution is for debris. It's not for David Gillow. That 48 car is about out of fuel there. He's been right on the apron ever since the caution came out, but he's going to make it to pit road. How about it, Dick? Well, Brian Vickers is going to pit for a very minor adjustment. The pressure will not be on Wes Evans, the gas man, because they're not going to fully have to put all the fuel in that you otherwise would. The run hasn't been long enough. Matt. And Tony Stewart pulls to a stop. You heard his diagnosis of the 14 car. They make big headway. Just some small possible air pressure change on that 14. Steve. Well, Matt, small adjustments again for Kyle Busch. Small track bar adjustments, some air out of the right side tires. Kyle saying he needs to turn just a little bit better in the center of the corners. Four tires for the 18. Oh, three wide. Here they come <laughs> off pit road. And Kyle Busch jumps in front of Newman, Stewart, and Vickers to lead them off pit road. If he hadn't have jumped in front of him, he'd have had to stop. There was no more room there. have another look at this race off pit road at lap 104. That's how close it is. <laughs> While you're watching the Auto Club 400, powered by Coca-Cola from Southern California, in time for an AT&T race break with Jeff Hamlin, Chris Myers, a quick recap, and Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, teammates. This is on lap two, going at each other, racing hard, because that's what you're supposed to do. Trevor Bay in the Daytona 500 hero, into the wall, hasn't done better than 20th since. Lap 22, here's where Kyle Busch 
goes ahead of his teammate. Kyle Busch has dominated the first 100 laps of this race. Pit problems costing Carl Edwards, who came in second of points as he dropped back just a bit. We've had nine leaders, 14 lead changes, but only a couple so far of caution flags and pit road issues. Pit road issues, but it happens to race off a of pit road right here. The 18 car, Kyle Busch, he beats Tony Stewart, his teammate Ryan Newman, as well as Brian Vickers off the pit road. And that right there, a big thumbs up to the crew chief saying, hey, that's the way you do it, guys, right there. And Denny Hamlin complained of problems with his car. Yeah, they thought it was an engine problem. And now they've decided it's an electrical problem. You'll see on top of the roof there on the right-hand side, that is a complete wiring harness. They're getting ready to change to try to get that 11 car back out to score some points. Jimmy Johnson has got 12 races without a victory. 19 is his career high. He's won here five times, but the pit stop put him back a few. Then you take a look here at our leader, Kyle Busch. His crew with 13-8, Jimmy's crew 15 flat. Driver's pretty equal, but the thing is, look at the total time. It cost him off the pit road. And looking at the current standings for the fastest pit crew and how the fans have voted so far, we'll keep an eye on this. You can get in on it by texting the car number you think will average the least amount of time on pit road. AT&T, the nation's fastest mobile broadband network. And Kyle Busch leading the race, and they're getting ready, Mike, to go green. Thanks, Chris. It'll be Kyle Busch and Brian Vickers on the front row for the restart. Vickers' last top five finish, August of 2009 at Michigan, a race that he won. Bush up on the outside in row two, teammates Newman and Stewart, then Harvick and Kenseth, Truex Montoya, Boyer, and Mark Martin, the top ten, as we go back to green for lap 108. Well, Michigan is a very similar racetrack, a sister racetrack to this one, and uh, certainly, like you said, Brian Vickers runs pretty darn good there. Kyle Busch in that 18, he is on his game on those restarts, though. You don't get nothing on him. Here comes Stewart and then Harvick up around the outside. Now, there's a lot of guys that are a little timid on new tires, low air pressure. Not him. Carl Edwards works the high side in the 99. Second half of a race, you usually find some new players working their way toward the front. Four wide mid-pack and the driver backing up a bit, Martin Truex in the 56, who was a big factor in this race early on. He can't get to his groove. He's been running up there where the 83 was. Not too good down low here. He needs to get back to that high side. But, Darrell, you mentioned it. It's about the same thing that happened to him at Bristol last week after leading a bunch of laps. Clint Boyer, the 33. Moving on Matt Kenseth. That's for seventh. Note the Childress Institute for Pediatric, Pediatric Trauma in Winston-Salem on the side of that Richard Childress car and the Ronald Reagan Centennial on the hood. Uh, both of those nonprofit causes will adorn Austin Dillon's debut in the Sprint Cup Series. It's going to come in a car furnished by Mike Kerb. A number 98 car a little later this season. Dylan is Richard Childress's grandson. <laughs> You're looking I, at the I, same I, thing I, I am. I jumped back out of the way. I thought that 83 was going to come through the TV. Brian Vickers, if you they charge you for the amount of asphalt you're using, he's getting his money's worth because he's rim riding all the way around his two-mile Look. racetrack. Look where everybody else is at. Look where Vickers in the 83's at. He is flying around the top. I mean, he is using that outside wall just to guide him around the turn. And in that last long green flag run, nobody was getting off turn two with any more speed than Brian Vickers. Well, when you run up there like that, believe it or not, it's much easier on the tires because you're not down around the bottom grinding them off. Looks like Kirk Busch in the 22 has found his way to the wall. And, and you know what? In, in years past, other cars that we've had, you'd say he's in trouble. These cars didn't seem to affect him one bit. Think about Kurt Busch came in here as our points leader, the only driver to have four top ten finishes to start 2011. And the reason for that is, is that impact foam that they put in the right side of these cars now for driver protection, but it also makes the car a lot tougher when it gets up against the wall. Well, Busch has his work to do in the second half of this race. He is 24th, while his younger brother leads by half a second. Here's our pole sitter, Juan Paula Montoya in the 42. Just a car length out of the top five right now as Harvick looks in. You know, as we're riding with Kevin Harvick in the 29 car, started back in the 24th position. I keep going back to this race a year ago. Had he not got a little greedy at the end, he may have won this race. Ended up finishing second to Jimmy Johnson. 
I believe this is where Larry, you know, it, it, we're halfway through the race. A lot of these crew chiefs, drivers, some of their notes, things that they think about. It's not the first half of the race. Where are we going to be? What's our car going to be like in the second half of the race? And Mike, one of our subjects at the top of the show was less time to adjust on the car. We are down to what could be a two stop race from here. The record for a 400 mile race is held at Michigan. Dale Jarrett did it uh, in 1999 at 173 miles an hour. I thought we were going to break that record there for a while, but these cautions have slowed us down a bit. Yeah, I think that was a caution-free race. It was a caution-free race. Two cautions today, both for debris, but we didn't see the first one until lap 76. Jeff Burton trying to overcome that speeding penalty. That dropped him from 6th to 26th. Kyle Busch had a tough start to this weekend. On Friday, he made his get up to speed lap, and on his first time lap of practice, watch Kyle out of turn four. Into the wall, into the grass, and then the front end will catch a manhole cover here. That knocks the splitter and it's supporting bracing off. So quickly they went to a backup car, only got one lap of practice in before he took this car and qualified eighth. These teams today, Mike, Larry, Larry knows this, they work just as hard on the backup car that's in the hauler for just because of that reason. Uh, they got the car set up and ready to go. You know, you, you pretty much have to. When I look at Kyle Busch, fans ask me all the time, where did a driver get their start in motorsports? When Kyle Busch was six years old, he started driving his go-kart around the cul-de-sac. He could reach the throttle, so his dad Tom rode on the side of it, mashed the throttle for him while he steered the go-kart. Kyle Busch trying to double up and win the Saturday and Sunday race for two weeks in a row. Now, who was the last fella to do that? Is Rowdy Bush mild mannered? <laughs> I don't think so. Not on NASCAR on Fox. The Auto Club 400 on Fox, powered by Coca-Cola, is sponsored by AT&T. Rethink possible. By the new Chevy Silverado HD, Motor Trend's 2011 Truck of the Year. And by American Ethanol, American grown, American made, powering NASCAR. 119 of 200 laps complete, riding with Greg Biffle. 81 laps to go, Biffle in 10th after starting 32nd. Kyle Busch out front, trying to make the weekend sweep Saturday and Sunday for the second week in a row. Here's our Auto Club race summary. Kyle is one of nine leaders today, 14 lead changes, 26 cars back to his older brother Kurt Busch, the last car on the lead lap. We've had just two brief cautions for debris for a total of eight laps. And the last driver to complete back-to-back -back weekend sweeps Saturday and Sunday, 1991, Harry Gant did it at Richmond and Dover. It was part of Gant's run of four consecutive cup race wins, nearly five for Mr. September, driving for Leo Jackson and Andy Petrie. When that happened, Kyle Busch was six years old. Riding his go-kart in the cul-de-sac. <laughs> That's with, right. With his dad, with Tom, his dad. pushing the throttle. And now you have the rest of the story. <laughs> Jeff Burton's had a nice rebound from that speeding penalty. He is up to 13th. Remember, Burton started fifth. And how about our pole sitter, Steve? Well, Mike, they've done a pretty good job of keeping up with the racetrack. They've reversed some of the changes they made earlier, but right now, Juan Pablo reporting that the car is getting really, really loose. Thanks, Steve. Our outside pole sitter did not fare well today. Denny Hamlin went behind the wall with what they thought was an electrical problem. He is now out of the race, and Krista's caught up with Denny. Yeah, Mike, they talked motor, then they talked electrical. I saw your crew chief hand you the spark plug. What was the final dagger today? Yeah, well, something uh, obviously with the valve train. Um, you know, if we had to guess right now, probably something similar to what the 20 had, uh, the reason they had changed motor. So you know, we got to... Got to go to work. Our engine department definitely got to go to work, and uh, we got to figure out how to get the reliability down. Obviously, we had pretty good speed early, but I could tell 
um, after a couple runs when we started slipping back that we were a little bit uh, flat. You know, our car just didn't didn't have the the, the speed that it had before. So um, evidently, it, it was a slow process, of, a slow death that our, our car had today. But um, now we just uh, root for our Joe Gibbs teammates and hopefully uh, Kyle can get a win. Denny, I know a lot of these engine issues this year have been independent of each other. You mentioned this was similar to the 20, but as a driver, where does this leave you? What do you go into each race thinking? Well, I, you know, the uplifting part is I'm going to some really, really good racetracks for, for ourselves. And, um, you know, with this new system, you can get in based on wins. If, if for some reason we can't work our way back to the top 10, but I, I feel like right now our, our race team's strong enough to where, you know, we get some good solid runs and just finish these races uh, we should be okay, but we uh, we got work to do, and that's that's the bottom line. Thanks, Teddy. Thanks, Krista. Hamlin will drop at what looks like four points in the Sprint Cup standings, four positions. He will drop. His teammate Joey Logano had an engine change earlier this weekend. Should Logano or Kyle Busch, the race leader, be concerned and do anything differently based on what's happened to Hamlin? No, you know, a lot of these things are, and I, I think, and in this case, though, Larry, I think they found out a sort of a common denominator. It is definitely something in the top end of these engines. That's the most fragile part of them. The rocker arms, valve springs, the valves themselves. You can get a bad batch of parts. You can get a bad batch of valve springs, rocker arms, or valves, and it takes a while to filter through them. The good news is for Denny Hamlin, even though he's going to fall way back in the points, what did you say in the pre-race? win and you'll still be in and we are headed to martinsville in texas and he he alluded to that there in that interview i guess we can get in on wins if we have to well that's a good thing so it's the gibbs toyota of kyle bush ahead of the stewart haas cars of tony stewart and the 39 of ryan newman 4.3 seconds back of the lead fourth is kevin harvick he's about 4.9 back in his richard childress chevy Better not take their eye off Kevin Harvick. He'll be the guy that slips up there near the end of this race. Brian Vickers has had a standout race. He is fifth in his Toyota. And in sixth, Jimmy Johnson. Matt? Mike, why Jimmy Johnson lost that time on pit road in those spots? Now he is pitting directly ahead of Ryan Newman. When they hit pit road, Newman had hit his box first. Johnson had to angle around, then had his car in a bad position in the box. His tire changers had to run a couple more steps. That's what cost them the time. So Chad Knauss was telling Jimmy what they learned from watching the videotape, like NFL coaches going back and watching game film and said, we're going to be more careful on our next stop. And if you look at the scoreboard, Newman, if we have a caution now, will pit before Johnson. Thanks, Matt. It cost Jimmy Johnson six positions on the racetrack. He's since made five of those up. Yeah, he's been driving hard. I mean, he just got around Matt Kenseth, and uh, he's trying to make up that time they lost in the pit. But I always tell Hammond, look, you can lose seconds in the pits. I can only make up a few hundreds out here on the racetrack. Kyle Busch has just passed Fireball Roberts for the 29th on the all-time NASCAR lap leader list. Sixty nine laps to go. Kyle Busch leading Tony Stewart. Let's take an inside look at what's happening now in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series brought to you by Sprint and HTC Evo 4G. Kyle has led 88 laps. That is the most of any driver by a huge margin. And the biggest mover in this race, Greg Biffle is up 22 spots. Started 32nd. He is running 10th. Fuel your inner NASCAR fan with live in-car audio and real-time stats on NASCAR Sprint Cup Mobile and the new HTC Evo 4G at Sprint.com slash speed. Wow, here's a crowd. 12th place on back. It's a little mini wad right there. Getting, getting all bunched up. But Dale Jr. continuing to pick him up and put him down. Yeah, Jr.'s got the low line. He likes to get in here and nice and low. Then you watch the 56. He's got the high line. And then they converge right along in there. And you got to get back behind him and try it again. This is when you're saying, come on, man, you're holding me up. Give me a break. You know, we're about four to eight laps. What will be probably the beginning of green flag pit stops is we've now got 67 laps to go. If the caution comes or if they make the green flag stops, it's then a one-stop race. 
Well, Truex just lost a lot of time right yeah. there to Montoya. I think Junior I, shoots past. I, I'm not so sure. He didn't hit the wall, but he was going for it. Truex, uh, he got up there and had to get out of the gas, and that opened the door for Junior to drive by. They have definitely made Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car better and better as we get into this race. See that right there is that you want to you want to cut it. You want to drift right up in front of him, but you're just not sure. Fourteenth and fifteenth here Truex and Earnhardt. And the difference between right now and later in the race coming down, you know, three or four five laps to go. You're just not sure, but you just don't care right now. You got to be careful. Another strong run for Paul Menard. He's not the first of the RCR cars right now, but he's close to it, Steve. Yeah, doing a great job, Mike. They're ninth right now. Tell you what, his crew chief, Slugger Lavi, pulled a slick move, a strategy on lap 75 on a caution. They took two tires to get track position. They were 21st at that time. They have been in the top 10 ever since. And you just think about it, Paul comes in here fifth in the points. The first four races of 2011, he got a career best finish at those four tracks. Sitting there running ninth right now, his best finish here at Auto Club Speedway, 18th. I like what he said. Somebody asked him, said, you know, you got your dad as your sponsor, and, you know, you really had it kind of, he said, let me tell you something. I don't really care what people say. I got a job to do, and I go out and do it every Sunday. And his teammate, Jeff Burton, said, yeah, your dad's money may help you get in this situation, but no matter how much there's there, it can't keep you there. It's so like I always like to say, Larry, at the end of the day, when I look over on the other side of the car, there's nobody sitting in the passenger seat. I'm in there all by myself. You got it. Clay Boyer in eighth, Menard ninth. Kevin Harvick in third is the highest RCR car. And green flag pit stops have begun with Regan Smith and David Gilliland in the pit lane. At lap 137. You can see where Smith has been against the wall with the right side of his Chevrolet. With as many green flag runs as we've had here, we talked about it at the top of the show, engine durability. I don't care if you're Kyle Busch, Regan Smith, or no matter who you are, as a driver, you are worried about the engines with as many green flag runs. And our race leader, Kyle Busch, the 18, he is on pit road for his green flag stop. With friends, bringing a lot of guys with him. Now, during the earlier green flag stops, it would be three or four laps into this sequence before we saw the leader. Here's Kyle right away. Ryan Newman comes in with him. So does Brian Vickers and Travis Quapo. Dick? Well, Vickers is pinning on at this point, Mike. The car is a little bit tight in the upstairs. That's it. Other than that, the car has been good. Steve? Small air pressure adjustment. That's the only adjustment for the 18 car. He said his car is just a little snug, but Kyle Busch likes the way this car is driving. Four tires. Good stop. Edwards is in along with Burton, Truex, Gordon. Matt? And Jeff Gordon's in, Mike. He says it must be the cloud cover, the temperature, the racetrack dramatically changing. That's why Gustafson taking a major swing with the adjustment. Meanwhile, Tony Stewart, he's on pit road as well. He says the car loose on entry, loose on exit. I'll fix the entry. You just fix the exit. Look for a chassis adjustment as well for Stewart. Harvick's in. Jimmy Johnson. Boyer comes down the pit lane with Menard. Dick? Kevin Harvick is going to take four tires. They are most concerned about speeding on pit road. He got nabbed in both races last year. Montoya, Mark Martin, Casey Kane, Matt? Mike, chassis adjustment already completed for Johns, and he says the car just way too tight, and it's very easy for him when he jumps in the gas to get the car too free. Krista. Clint Boyer says his car still needs grip. They're going to give it to him with a slight track bar adjustment. Matt Kenseth in and out. Ambrose, Steve. Four tires for Paul Menard. Said his car has gotten a little bit tight, so they make a small adjustment. Very small window of laps here. Everyone making their green flag stops because Kyle Busch hit pit road so early. Couldn't be far behind him. Both Bobby Labonte and Kurt Busch with the right sides pretty scraped up. Kyle Busch goes back to the lead at lap 139 in the Auto Club 400.
The Auto Club 400 on Fox, powered by Coca-Cola, is sponsored by Sprint, proud sponsor of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Kyle Busch, backup car, no problem, dominating this race with just 56 laps to go. He's led 95 laps, and as we look at our Coca-Cola race summary, you can see the number of lead changes and leaders. Only two cautions, that's figured in much of the green flag racing so far in this race. And remember, it was Jimmy Johnson who said of Kyle Busch that you don't want to let him get out in front. This is when he dominates, dictates the pace of the race as the leader. And Kyle Busch this week saying he can no longer afford to be a NASCAR's bad boy as Jimmy Johnson trying to stay in the hunt, currently running fifth. And the three Bs who need to be on their A game, Jeff Burton, Greg Biffle, and Clint Boyer all running the top 14, trying to figure in the points. But with 55 laps to go, Tony Stewart, Kevin Harvick trailing Kyle Busch. Remember Stewart, his last win was here in October, and an early gamble uh, heading into the pits allowed him to stay out in front and continue to contend as Jimmy Johnson moves up to fourth in front of Brian Vickers. Let's head upstairs to Daryl, Larry, and Mike. Thanks, Chris. When Kyle Busch peeled off to go to pit road, he had a 2.1 lead over Tony Stewart. When pit stops were done, he had a five and a half second lead. Larry, why? Well, I think you'll see it right here. If you look, Kyle Busch's team about a second and a half better than Tony Stewart's on the actual pit stop. The driver time, meaning the time getting on and off pit road. There's certainly about a little over a second difference. And you see right there, there's where the big difference was made when you add those two together, almost three seconds difference, which adds up to the time that you gave right there. You know, one thing I, he said, and, uh, and Chris just mentioned it, I can't afford, keyword afford, to continue to be NASCAR's bad guy. Listen, they just signed a new three-year deal with their sponsor, M&M's. Sponsors sooner or later step in and say, dude, you've got all the talent in the world. Let's, let's, let's work on the rest of our game. I think that's what happened to him at Hendrick Motorsports. Could have been. Check back in and uh, see how your Pizza Hut fan favorite driver is doing. That would be Jeff Gordon. Currently running in 20th. There are 25 cars on the lead lap. Gordon in 20th. And he's 31 seconds back. So if he loses another 10 seconds, he's in danger of going a lap down to Kyle Busch. You know, I mentioned the track record at Michigan for a 400 mile race, 173.997. That was without any cautions. Right. We're averaging 157.14 here today with two cautions for eight laps. So we're on a tearing pace. 53 to go. At least one more pit stop. Can they make it on just one, Larry? One more pit stop somewhere around lap 170 to 172, right in that range, and that'll get you to the end. And that actually even builds you a little bit of a cushion should we have a late race caution and get into a green-white checker. I like a little bit of a cushion, Larry. Thank you. Not a bad thing. Kyle moving through race traffic. Marcus Ambrose has gone two down, about to fall three in the number nine. Then rookie Trevor Bain and Kurt Busch. Both the Penske cars having an off day. And uh, Keselowski has now gone a lap down. Kurt Busch in danger of that. I just always wonder when you're when you're Kyle back there and you see Kurt up ahead, if you think, uh -huh, let me just run up on up here and lap him and add a little bit more misery to his day. Which one of them was it a couple of years ago said, this is how we race up near the front. That's what Kyle, <laughs> that's what Kyle told me. He told his brother one day and he said, the brother really got hot about it. Not surprising. Daytona 500 winner Trevor Bain will run next week at Martinsville, but the Wood Brothers will not run all the races uh, with this number 21 Ford. Well, you think about him being in the wall like on the fourth or fifth lap of the race, so they've had to overcome a lot, and he's not running all that bad. He's uh, running 28th right now. About to go two laps down. 50 laps to go in the Auto Club 400, powered by Coca-Cola on Fox. Kyle Busch leading Tony Stewart by 4.6 seconds. FXB, Fox TV, what's in the box for you? Kyle Busch hoping to close out California, but Tony Stewart, Kevin Harvick, and Jimmy Johnson have other ideas. Time for an AT&T race break for the Auto Club 400, powered by Coca-Cola with Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers, and moments ago we saw Kyle Busch 
younger brother of Kurt Busch, Kurt who came in as the points leader, get lapped. Yeah, he's not having the day he's been looking for. Daryl and Larry and Mike have been talking about it all along. They've been chasing the hand on this 22 car. They've tried two tires. They've made a bunch of adjustments. They just can't get him comfortable to be able to run with his brother. Now he finds himself a lap down in 24th position. And 45 laps to go. Matt Kenseth bobbing between 5th and 6th with Brian Vickers. Ryan Newman trying to close in on Jimmy Johnson. He's a three-time winner here. Uh, a very strong racetrack for him. And a lot of people in the garage area or this morning said Matt Kenseth would be one of the cars you'd have to beat. This race is not over with yet, uh, Chris. They seem like they've been able to get the 17 car a little bit quicker. But whether he can run with an 18, I'm not too sure. And Kyle Busch has led 105 laps. The closest driver after that, Denny Hamlin, who led 15 before having a valve train problem and being out of this race. So one stop to go in theory here. We've had green flag racing, only two cautions. What should we look for? And what do you tell Kyle Busch, who looks like he's got things under control? When it comes time to make that critical pit stop, this is where Dave Rogers needs to tell Kyle Busch, do not, I repeat, do not speed on the pit road. We've got a big enough lead. You've been good enough. Let's don't beat ourselves on pit road. Now I've got to go to my guys and tell them the same things. No mistakes. If all of a sudden you hang, hang a lug nut or mess up an adjustment, you could lose some valuable time that could wind up costing you. But he's got a pretty comfortable lead right now on Tony Stewart. On the other hand, Tony Stewart's guys <laughs> may decide to be able to maybe roll the dice and go for two tires to try to force an issue. So a little bit of gamesmanship right here getting ready to get set up. And Jeff, a look at the current standings for the fastest pit crew, how the fans got involved. AT&T customers can find out the final race standings. As soon as the checkered flag drops, text your fastest pit crew choice. Reply OK when prompted to receive exclusive updates. AT&T, the nation's fastest mobile broadband network. And Mike, we'll have to watch that speeding on pit road, a little irony at a sport where you're supposed to go fast, uh, speeding could certainly have an effect on the outcome of the race. Well, you're right, Chris. It, uh, it caught Jeff Burton earlier, and it just got Ken Schrader, who made a pit stop and was too fast in the pit lane, had to do a drive-through penalty. Ryan Newman, Clint Boyer. Boyer in eighth place. Make that seventh, back to eighth. Newman holding on. Boyer can't clear him. Newman hangs tough. Fox Saturday baseball begins. Yes, it's time for the national pastime. Here are the games you'll see on Fox on Saturday. And we'll be at Martinsville, Virginia on Sunday with NASCAR on Fox. That's kind of like Kyle Busch. He hits a home run every time he goes to bat. <laughs> Bush leads Tony Stewart now by 3.8 seconds. The Auto Club 400 on Fox, powered by Coca-Cola, is delivered by UPS. Let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you. 38 laps to go in the Auto Club 400 as you watch from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Goodyear, more driven. Kyle Busch out in front, leading more than 100 laps at California Speedway for the first time in his career. When he won here for Rick Hendrick in September of 2005, he led 95 laps. Today, he's led 117 of the 163 so far. And how about Tony Stewart? When everyone else pitted at lap 76 or so, he stayed out because he'd been on pit road just seven laps prior. That gave him the lead and track position. And the race played his way. Yeah, and then when that caution came out on lap 103, he was about one to three laps from having to come to pit road for a green flag stop. Fortunately, we got a caution, put everybody back on even ground. Are we maxed out on the track bar bus? 10-4. I'm afraid you're going to tell me that. I'll work around it. I'll figure it out. I'll figure something out here. We'll work around it here. Tony would like a little more adjustment, none to be had. Well, it's taken this whole green flag run. Remember, they were all on pit road between lap 137 and 139. He's chipped it down to about two seconds behind Kyle Busch that 18. Oh, car. he's coming. Oh, he's a little quicker on the watch. And so is Kevin Harvick in a new feature for NASCAR on Fox where we can graph a driver's performance through the day. Let's have a look at Kevin Harvick, who started the day in 24th position. 
Worked his way up into the top 10 by lap 96 and at lap 129 up into third place. That's why he's earned the nickname Mr. Where did he come from. <laughs> That's right. Now you know where. And I think he may even be happy. Well he should be he and Jimmy Johnson are the two fastest cars on the racetrack this last time by. Jimmy started 16th and he's fought his way to fourth. And Brian Vickers what a comeback he has just been bad fast all day long. This is great for his comeback you know to get in the car he's had some bad luck been in some wrecks. If he can finish this off this would be great for his return to the sport. In seventh place is Matt Kenseth. He is the highest placed for Dick. He started ninth. And he's had an up and down day all day, Mike. The chassis has gone from tight to loose to plowing to this and that. But he is facing a problem that nobody else, at least at my end of the pits, is. They didn't get all the gas in on the last stop. He is going to have to stop five or six laps before anybody else. That's Kenseth in the 17. Thanks Dick Regan Smith is on pit road. This would be the first he was the first driver to come to pit road in the last round of green flag stops So not surprising. He would be the first this time as we have a look at Clint Boyer who's in seventh after starting 15th and Kenseth is on pit road as uh, Dick predicted for what he hopes is his last stop Dick. Clint Boyer right now very happy with his race car. He said that he doesn't want any adjustments. They're waiting for Brian Vickers to pit. Right now, Earnhardt is right behind him on pit road. Vickers' car is not as good as it has been earlier. They're going to make some adjustments to it on this pit stop. Joey Logano's in. Dale Earnhardt Jr. completes his service. David Rudiman. Bobby Labonte comes to the pit lane. Here comes Vickers. Steve. Juan Pablo Montoya saying the car is getting tight again in all the same places. I still need help pointing the car. Dick. Now Vicker, Vickers in now making his pit stop. The crew on this particular car wears cameras on their helmets so they can see in replay exactly how they've handled it. Good stop for Vickers. Mark Martin is in. Greg Biffle, Jeff Burton. Martin Truex coming in. Jamie McMurray, David Reagan, Almondinger, and Kyle Busch, our leader, is in the pit lane. Tony Stewart follows him down pit road. They're going to pit at the same time. Krista. Martin Truex has been shaking his head because they've been going too far on the pendulum with their changes. He was loose up top on the last run. They make the adjustment. Steve? Krista Kyle Busch knows that he is no longer in the fastest car on the racetrack, saying that his car has just gotten too tight in the center. They will make a chassis adjustment and four tires, Matt Yoakum. And Jimmy Johnson stopped his complete, Steve. No adjustments for Johnson. He said it finally got free enough to where he could run the top, and he was picking up about two tenths a lap. Brian Newman's, Newman has service. Jeff Gordon coming in. Pretty good uh, observation on, on, on Kyle Busch's part to know that his car had gotten off a little bit, and these other guys are gaining on him. They needed to make a quick change there. Carl Edwards gets an adjustment. Trevor Bain really smoked the tires, getting slowed down to enter pit road. And we should cycle around with Bush back in the lead. Now, when Kyle Bush came to pit road, he had a 1.1 second lead on Tony Stewart. He stretches it again this time to 2.7 seconds over Stewart. The Auto Club 400 on Fox is powered by Coca Cola. Open a Coke and enjoy the race and sponsored by Viagra and by Subway Restaurants, the official training restaurant of Carl Edwards. Subway, eat fresh. Caution is out for the third time today and only a few of the lead of the cars are taking the opportunity to pit. Here's why. Watch the 71 of rookie Andy Lally trying to toss and catch it and can't hold on to it. It looked like all the tires were up after Lally pulled away from this spin off turn number four. Yeah it had the appearance of a right rear tire being low but uh, doesn't look low right there. So Lally is the caution. Landon Castle gets the free pass. Very few people pitted.
The only drivers on the lead lap who stopped under this caution, Joey Logano, David Reagan, Jamie McMurray, and A.J. Allmendinger, they were all toward the tail end of the lead lap. So Kyle Busch and Tony Stewart will try to settle this as they come to the restart with 26 laps to go ahead of Kevin Harvick, Jimmy Johnson, Matt Kenseth, and Clint Boyer. Green flag. I believe that caution came out just right for Kyle Busch because his car was starting to give up a little bit. If they made the right changes, we'll see what happens here. Four abreast into turn one. Look at this land rush. Boy, that uh, 14 car has been getting stronger, and so is that 48 up on the outside. Mr. California Speedway there. I was going to say 05 time, Jimmy Johnson right there sitting in the third spot. Matt? Mike, Tony Stewart's been given the green light. No concerns for fuel, even if we go into an overtime situation with a green-white checkered finish. They are eight to ten laps to the good on fuel. A lot of hard racing mid-pack, three wide. Man, this one, you got to get it, Mike. I mean, you can't let them get away now. If you got anything, buddy, you better start using it big time. You're going to force the issue right here, which usually creates a little bit of a problem. Make that four wide off the corner. Rudem and Bernard, Biffle and Earnhardt. And Montoya. Montoya. Montoya, our pole sitter in that 42, just shot up the outside. What did Tony Stewart say? Excuse me, coming through, pardon me. There's still three wide off four. This is where it gets a little hairy, being three and four wide is on that exit of turn four. Bernard playing toss and catch it with the 27. Just, Mark Martin coming back on the bottom in that green number five. one of the widest tracks in all of NASCAR and they're using every inch of it. Even with the long green flag runs that we've had and with three cautions, we still have 23 drivers on the lead lap. He's coming to keep an eye on this group right here because Rudeman down on the apron in the double zero. I mean way down on the apron through the corner. Boy, they get whew, a little snug back here. Look out. On the left, Childress team battle for fifth. Boyer and Harvick with Matt Kenseth. And on the right, everybody fighting for 12th on back. I've been watching Kevin Harvick in the 29 car. He really struggles on the exit of the corner. His car just really wants to break loose. Doesn't have a lot of rear grip in it right now. Jamie Mack in the one, trying to race back up into the top 10. The past 17th. And Bain has been in the wall again. Yeah, he was uh, he was really being forced to the outside by a lot of these cars that maybe were a little quicker than him. Right side of your screen, the 21. Pretty good hit right there coming off. That was off turn two. He got it off turn four earlier. Okay, 22 fast, laps to go. Here's the battle for second. That's the fastest car on the track right now, Jimmy Johnson. He's run a little bit quicker lap times than even the leader is. Uh, he's got that thing dialed in when it counts. This is the 10th anniversary of Jimmy Johnson, Hendrick Motorsports Lowe's. He won his first race here back in 2002. Whoa. Boy, he had his hands Whoa. full there. Car just broke loose with him. Hey, what he was hey, trying to good, do. Doing good. Clear by eight. Clear by ten. What he was trying to do was cut to the inside of a Tony Stewart there. He was going to try to make a run across the back of him. He got loose. I believe he's going to make it work here, possibly through two and turn two, but Stewart in the 14 gets the run on the on the upper side of the racetrack. Yeah, good launch off the corner for Tony. Jimmy Johnson knows he's only got a short period of time here, a little window of opportunity to get to Kyle Busch up there in that 18. Once the tires start to give up a little bit, it'd be hard to get him. Now Kevin Harvick is catching these two as they battle for second. Harvick and Boyer on the right of your screen are trying to close. And yeah, Ryan Newman is there. Jimmy Johnson made the pass on Tony Stewart getting down into turn one there. And you can see the distance up to the lead, not that much. Johnson in the 48 finally clears Stewart. He'll slide up in front of him off turn two. 20 laps to go. Now just remember, when you catch somebody, it takes a lap or two to work around them, even if you are a little bit better than they are. 
20 laps, 40 miles. This is not just a sprint cup race. It's a sprint race from here. Game on. And Kyle Busch trying to hold the field back at seven tenths of a second. That's his lead over Jimmy Johnson, and it is dwindling. Talked about Jimmy Johnson in the 48 having one of the fastest cars. I've been watching his scoring monitor. Another one is Ryan Newman in that 39 car. We got battles all over this racetrack with 19 laps to go. This is when you give her all you got, Larry. You just got to stand on that gas pedal, baby. Fourth place battle on the upper left, on the upper right. That's the fight for 11th. And at the bottom of the screen is the lead. Stevie Latar, Dale Jr., they've done a nice job of adjusting him up today. He's in 12th spot here, fight with Vickers. Looking for another top 10. Drivers not named Kyle Busch have led a total of only 46 laps today. He has led the other 136 laps. And this is when uh, he's, Kyle Busch is special, all the, but he's really special at the end of these races. Think about last week at Bristol. He had Carl Edwards all over him. But he sat there, he focused, and eventually he drove away. I think he showed it again in yesterday's race when they put two tires on him with 10 to go under green. Not many drivers can do what he did with it, but he did it for 10 laps. Matt, the gap is back to seven tenths of a second from Kyle to Jimmy. Absolutely, Mike, and I'll tell you what, his spotter, Earl Barbie, keeps calling him on lap after lap. He is closing in on that 18 car. And you would not, you know, Jimmy Johnson's won four of the last seven races here. So, and he was the favorite going into today's race. Even in the animated game, he was the favorite to win. And look who's coming. Fifth place, Harvick. Sixth place, Newman. Seventh place, Kenseth. They're all closing in. Be a whole different animal next Sunday from Martinsville, Virginia on the half mile. You know, while we're su on the subject of Richard Childress racing as we'll be coming down to 16 laps to go, Paul Menard has been carrying the banner in that 27 car, but Jeff Burton, after that penalty early in the race in the 31, he's now cracked the top 10 up in ninth. Yeah, there's no question Burton had a fast car and that penalty really set him back, but uh, fortunately it was early enough in the race he's been able to get back to where he was. Go back to Matt. Mike, 10 years ago, the Wood Brothers were sponsored by the Air Force. They carried on that military tradition of printing up special coins. Glenn Wood gave one years ago to John Force, 15-time NHRA champion. He's always carried it with him. Robert Height won Pomona last month in the NHRA with the coin in the car. And when Glenn Wood saw what Jeff Gordon did with Trevor Bain, he gave Gordon one. Then he won at Phoenix. And guess what? The guy who was reeling in the 18, he got a special one for a special note and gift basket for the Wood Brothers Caution. 500 win. Caution. Caution for Bobby Labonte, who has pounded the turn two wall in his Toyota. Yeah, that's a 15 really to go, and we're under yellow. Hard lick here. Yeah. Watch the blue car coming in from the right. And it and never sliding turns. Up. It just looks no. like that's got to be right front tire because it never turned. When you see one head up the track like that, that's usually a right front tire. Labonte was two laps down at the time. Oh, boy. Well, Larry, what do you think, bud? Some serious decisions. I'm telling you right, right now. now. I'll, maybe, I'll be sweating down there, man. Well, here's the question. Do you want tires or do you want track position with about 10 laps to go on the restart? Well, we know that fresh tires, it's worth a lot. And you're going to have to get up on the wheel and go here with this few laps to go. I think we're going to see a lot of guys hit pit road, but I think we'll see the same thing again. I think we'll see a mixed bag of strategy, possibly two tires. I think some will go with the four tires. But they, they have over 15 laps on these tires. Quite honestly here, that's a lot. Uh, here's the only thing I'm hoping. If I'm leading this race, when I look in my mirror, I'm not on the track by myself. That's the only thing I'm hoping. There are 24 lead lap cars. Certainly from about 10th on back, everybody will come in. Those first eight or nine drivers, track position could be key, but like Larry says, new tires are quicker. And the only other thing I'm hoping is if I hit pit road, I'm not on pit road by myself. True. You got to have, if you stay out, you need people to stay out with you. If you come in, you need people to come in with you. If not, could be over. Kurt Busch will get the free pass. His Penske Dodge will be the 25th place car on the lead lap when we go back to green. And I believe pit road could be open this time by. No, they're going to keep it closed. 
uh, Labonte's doing car a little cleanup. Is, well, it's lot, Labonte's car is sitting down there at the end of pit road. He can't. Yep. Uh, they haven't got it off the track yet. If you just take our top three, Kyle Busch, Jimmy Johnson, and Tony Stewart, they pitted on lap 169. We had the caution that came one lap after that. So basically they went back racing at lap 174. These, these tires have about 12 laps on them right now, uh, taking those caution laps out of the equation. I just don't see how, whoa, took on the grill. We got a little issue here with the paper on the grill of the 18 car. You know, I was down the concession stand yesterday, Daryl, and they have a, a sign there that's a track policy. They do not issue napkins with any food purchases here at the Speedway, and we've seen today the reason why. We see a lot of wrappers that find their way onto the grills of these cars just because it's so windy. Yeah, and you know what that looked like on the grill of the 18 car was a piece of tear off off of one of the windshields. Ooh, it looked like, it a, be. like a piece of plastic. Bobby Labonte spun his car to a stop because it caught fire under hood from the damage after hitting the wall down in turns one and two. And now they'll have to take it with the wrecker. He is right near the commitment cone at the entrance to pit road. So pit road cannot be open until that car is removed. And what this does, this could change the decision because obviously as pit road continues to be closed, the laps keep clicking off, which will be fewer laps at the end of this race. This could change the, some of the decisions of these teams. It could change it. It could change it for the better. But then on the other hand, the longer you think about it, it could change it for the worse too. So just don't know yet. Kyle Busch pulled up behind that uh, Chevy Camaro safety car and uh, pulled this nifty move. There you go. And to away it went. clear his grill of that debris. That little bit of air off of the car in front of him, the pace car there, sucked it right off of there. Nice. That may be the cool move of the day. You just get the feeling nothing is going to derail his train today <laughs> or well, this weekend. So far it hadn't. A lot of thinking going on, Larry. Well, Mike, and you said it somewhere in that field of the cars. We, we've got 24 cars on the lead lap. Somewhere back there, you're going to start a breakout of people coming to pit road. And whoever that car that's in front of that car that hits pit road, he's the one that goes, uh-oh. Exactly, Larry. That's, that's what you really worry about right here as a crew chief and a driver. 12 laps to go this time by next Sunday. NASCAR on Fox moves to Martinsville, Virginia. Denny Hamlin, defending champion of that race, trying to take his fourth checkered flag, fourth straight at that track. Coverage begins next Sunday with our pre-race show delivered by Pizza Hut, 12.30 Eastern, 9.30 Pacific, in high definition right here on Fox. Let's have a look at the Sprint Cup standings compared to how they were at the start of the race. Carl Edwards right now running in eighth place would take over the lead from Kurt Busch. Kyle would climb to second, Tony to third, Ryan would hold fourth. And Jimmy Johnson would move into the top five. A gain of two spots. Been a tough day for Kurt Busch, came in as the point leader. And he may lose five positions in the standings as he currently runs last car on the lead lap 25th. Uh, getting the free pass on this caution flag. Well, that uh, 47 car is still on fire up under there. That that was a hard lick. You saw the body climb out. Okay. And uh, they'll do a little bit of sweep up here at the entrance to pit road. And when the pace car comes around turn four, the pits are open. This is one of them oh boy moments right here. What will you do? Pretty sure the 18 will stay out. The question is how many will stay out with him. Sweeper truck runs for cover. Last chance to commit. No, Kyle stays out. Jimmy, everybody back through about seventh place stays out. Matt Kenseth leads everyone else onto pit road. Everyone else who is on the lead lap, that is. It's a really, really good. I mean, that's just this is just textbook. This is what happens anytime you have a situation like this. First five or six, eight cars stay out, everybody else pits. Steve. And Mike, Dave Rogers, a crew chief, did not make his decision until the final second. And before they opened pit road, he said, Kyle, my gut tells me we need to stay out. We need track position. Kyle's behind him all the way. He didn't say a word. Martin Truex in and out. 
So the car you talked about who would be the sitting duck, the last car not to pit is the car of Carl Edwards. Carl Edwards seven. in that 99 car. The top seven stayed out. All right, let's check with Chris Myers. Well, Mike, you know the leader of the most laps doesn't mean you're going to win the race unless you can close it out. We'll see if Kyle Busch can do that. He's led the most from the start of this race, passing his teammate Denny Hamlin. Hamlin has led the second most laps in this race. Tony Stewart stayed out early. Yeah, I had a, a round of green flag followed by caution. He stayed out and led the lap, showed his muscle. And I hear Denny Hamlin right here thought he had an electrical problem. Come to find out it was terminal. He's out of the race. Very few cautions in this race, but Kyle Busch maintained his lead coming off pit road. And Jeff, how about the strategy? Strategy, the decision of the car is staying out of this recent go round. I really think a lot of these people, including Dave Rogers and this and Kyle Busch, saw how well Tony Stewart's car went earlier in this race and decided, hey, I think we can make this work as well. Remember, he won the race yesterday, just taking two tires on the Saturday race. A lot of excitement left here next Sunday in Martinsville on Saturday. Baseball returns to Fox and among the games available for you, Tigers and Yankees defending World Series champion Giants. Talk about a rivalry with the Dodgers and the Padres. Take on the Cardinals. Fox Saturday Baseball presented by Budweiser returns at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific in high definition. Join us next Saturday and every Saturday. Check local listings for the game and the start time in your area. And Kyle Busch, uh, along with or despite his teammates, asked his favorite driver in NASCAR Sprint Cup racing today. He said it was Mike Jimmy Johnson, the guy he's going to try and hold off here. Thanks, Chris. Johnson has led only one lap today. He only wants to lead one more, the last lap. In his Sprint Cup career, Johnson has three last lap passes. Clint Boyer, can he be the spoiler today as he lines up for it? And Landon Castle in the 09, that red and black car in the left column, he got the free pass back at lap 172 on the third caution of the day, and he is in the top 10. Well, James re Finch. Remember, this is the car that Bill Elliott drove, and they asked Landon when he got in this car, do you think this could lead to a permanent ride? And he said, if I do my job, I think it will. Today, thank he's, you, teachers. Thank he's you did done his a job. great job. Now, Castle was not in that top seven, but he also did not pit on this caution. That puts him up to eight. So eight cars on worn tires, everybody else with fresh ones. Jimmy Johnson in his career, he has three wins by last lap passes. In Kyle Busch's cup career, he has three losses by last lap passes, not necessarily to Jimmy Johnson. But it's about to sort out here. It'll be nine laps to go. When we get the restart, it's the Kyle and Jimmy show up front. Great flag, great flag, come on. Stewart, Boyer, Harvick, Newman, Edwards breathing down their necks. Boys, Jimmy Johnson stayed right with Kyle on that restart. We'll see what happens. They go to turn one. Jimmy's going to take that low line. Kyle's got the momentum on the outside. Shooting through the middle comes Casey Kane. Boy, and Tony wow. Stewart. And Tony Stewart took a bit of a beating on that restart. Stewart lines up with Newman. Boyer down on the inside. And in the 33. Stewart goes with him. And what happened to a lot of those cars back there, Landon Castle that we talked about in the 09, really stacked them up on that restart. Yeah, he's probably going to be in trouble there, but it was still a it's still a, a worth the worth the effort, worth the gamble. And Tony Stewart at 14 continues to lose a lot of spots on this restart. Matt Kenseth goes by on the inside. Montoya ahead. Watch this 83 car on the outside there. He was coming in a hurry. Brian Vickers, that silver car, now to the inside, working on Kenzie. Penalty on Joey Logano for restarting, passing before the start finish line. He'll get a pass through penalty, and that'll take Logano from 15th. Probably to being down a lap. Larry, I just don't believe I've seen anybody that can step it up the last 10 laps of a race with everybody breathing down your neck like Kyle Busch can. He just got a little extra all the time. Now, here's the driver that's on the move, that four car, Casey Kane, even though he's getting a challenge from Kevin Harvick in the 29. Casey Kane, one of those cars that came to pit road on that last caution. Kane's strong, but look at Harvick coming. Harvick's the best closer in the business. And the bigger the track, the faster he seems to be in the final five or eight laps. That's going to be his problem, though. This might be 
Might have a fast car, but it's just going to be uh, maybe a little, not enough laps for him to get up there. Whoa. <laughs> Kane thought about sliding up in front of him, but it wasn't time to do it there. No, it wouldn't have been in front. <laughs> it would have been into. Carl Edwards tried to take advantage. Carl's making a nice run here, guys. The 99 car, Carl Edwards. Pretty nice run here for yep. him. No sitting duck. He's the fifth place car, and here comes his teammate, Kenseth. Kenseth got those tires. He's coming up through there. For about 10 more laps from here to go, it might be a different story. The only guy that I think's got a real shot at the 18 car is this guy right here in the 48, and he is nipping away at him. It'll be five to go. Jimmy Johnson is so close. He's there, buddy. I tell you, he's going to put the heat on him. Quarter of a second. It's going to be a matter of which line do I take. Newman, one second back in third. Harvick is up to fourth. Kenseth has taken fifth, and they're coming. Seems to me like that the, the 18 car is a little bit better right there. Whoa, this car is, wow, through the middle. The Red Bull sandwich there, Clint yep. Boyer. They're just split them. Here comes Johnson again, guys. He's looking down under. He's there. Four laps to go this time. Seems like Jimmy's a little better in three and four. Kyle's a little bit better in one and two. That's kind of the way it looks to me. Yeah, Johnson in the 48's not getting off turn two real good. Not quite as good as Kyle is. Harvick now third. But Darrell, he may run out of time, and yet if these two get the battling side by side, he may be right there. Watch that gap open up right there. Jimmy was looking underneath of him through the middle of the corner. Kyle gets that nice run off the top. Really hard about 10 back. Yes, he is. I tell you, he, he is. I just looked at the 29 car, and while these two cars up here are racing each other, hello, and look at Jimmy down all the way down on the apron. Can't get alongside Kyle Busch. Yes, he can. This Johnson off the corner. You know who's going to win this race? That 29, 29 car. Is six behind you. Outside, 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 outside. As they run side by side, Harvick is there. He makes it a three-car battle. He's, going to, he's, he's there, and here goes Jimmy to the lead. He's going to clear Kyle off of two. They're going to get side by side going down the back again, and that's going to open the door for the 33. Harvick is coming. Harvick finished second to Jimmy Johnson here last year. Behind you, Behind them, Newman and Kenseth. Darrell, what Kevin Harvick made sure he didn't do is overdrive the interest of the corner right there, and it's paying dividends on the exit. I'm not so sure this isn't going to get ugly. One back. Two laps to go. I think uh, Kyle doesn't like it when somebody starts cutting him off like that, and Jimmy's taking his line away, but he may have driven in it. Oh, oh, he, he got, got in the wall. No, he got in the corner way, way, way too hard. And Harvick takes second. This is not over. Here he comes. That 33 car is on it, boys. A lap and a half to Our go. 29 car. I'm sorry. 29. Been working the top. Can't help you though. No. Here comes Kyle Busch fighting it back on the bottom. Top. He's even with Harvick, even for second. They're all they're searching for grip right now. And drops back in line. White flag for Jimmy Johnson. One lap to go. Harv's going to have to make a big move right down here. Harvick trying the outside as Johnson. He's runs got the, the middle momentum. Of the racetrack. He's got the momentum right there. That's been his strong point. That speed will carry all the way down the back straightaway. A bump. He's going he's to push him up into the corner faster than he wants to go, I think. Kyle Busch is five car lengths back. It's here a two he comes. Race, and here he's comes got Harvick. Him. He's got Johnson him. got loose. He's got him. That little push getting into three. That little bump. Harvick Johnson switches lanes. Johnson can't get there. Harvick wins it. 29. The best closer in the business. Hell of a job. Gil, Kevin, good job, guys. Hell of a job. I've heard that voice all day, Larry. <laughs> That's Childress. Richard Childress, Childress, the owner. Childress chiming in. Harvick proves it again today. Awesome job, guys. Awesome job. That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Four, goodbye. job, guys. Kevin Harvick led one lap. Or maybe a fourth of a lap. This is a home game for Kevin Harvick, Bakersfield boy. Five races in 2011, five different winners.
That was a show right there. To come from back where he did and to get by those guys, that was a show. Put on a show here, buddy. <laughs> Darrell, I'd say that's the best race that this speedway has given us. The move to 400 miles has been nothing short of magical. Yeah, there was a lot of really good racing going on all day along here in this uh, in, in the 400 miles. So uh, and to have a great finish like that. Perfect. Matt Kenseth fourth, Ryan Newman fifth, Carl Edwards, Clint Boyer, Casey Kane. Or Brian Vickers, Casey Kane and Montoya, the top ten. He finished second to Jimmy Johnson a year ago. We talked about it. He said, I learned what I did wrong and what I needed to do different. The biggest difference between last year and this year, he didn't hit the wall in turn three and four this year. Time the crossover move just right. Dave Johnson, that little bump going down the backstretch, had a big run down the backstretch, but then waited for turn three to make the move. But that, you, what you don't realize is that shove he was giving Jimmy into turn three, it affected Jimmy had to be thinking about that. It cost him a little bit of concentration. Harvey jumped all over him. You've seen a great race today, and we've got lots of folks to talk to, including our winner, Kevin Harvick, after this. Back live in California with a finish worthy of what movies are made of in a clash of California closers. Kevin Harvick overtakes Jimmy Johnson. Let's get out of the celebration in victory lane. It is a Budweiser covered victory lane. That is for sure. When you're racing against the guy who's getting all the headlines in Kyle Busch and the guy who always wins at this track, Jimmy Johnson, is there even more pressure, even more hunger to do what you just did on that final lap? Well, we had them all beat last year here, and I gave it away. So uh, first off, I just got to thank everybody from Jimmy John's. I know they're pumped, Budweiser, Ream, Chevrolet, Sprint, and all these fans for coming out today. So uh, what a great day. Uh, all these guys uh, did a great job on pit road, and Gil made the right call. I was like, when I saw those guys pit at the end, I said, man, we might be in deep trouble. And we held those guys off, and our car just kept going. Kevin, you said there are three of maybe the first four races that you guys could have or should have contended for the win and didn't. Does this give you any sort of redemption here today? Well, we've just had a lot of adversity uh, that we fought through, and we knew our cars were fast enough to win races. Um, just hadn't had all the circumstances go right. And today we had a fast car, and, and the circumstances played in our favor. And you can see the smile there. He said to Gil Martin, I guess staying out was the right call. I got to say hi to my wife at home. Love you. <laughs> Very good move on Kevin Harvick's part today. He finished second here this time last year. Today he tops it off with a win, Mike. Thanks, Krista. Let's let you ride with Kevin Harvick and listen to Kevin and his spotter Billy O'Day and let them show you how they won this race. Don't you block it. You won't get there. It's yours, man. Throttle it up. Come on, buddy. Stand in the gas. You know, we can go all the way to the bottom. You're cleared. All the way down. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Have that. Good job, Harry. Hell of a job. Gil, Kevin, good job, guys. Hell of a job. First time, that, first time that Harvick has passed Jimmy Johnson for a race win. It's the first win in, at, at California Speedway, uh, Auto Club Speedway for Richard Childress Racing. Tough day for Tony Stewart, who faded to 13th at the finish. Kyle Busch was the strongest all day. We knew Jimmy Johnson could win here. Kevin Harvick, where did he come from? <laughs> now, i tell you something, though, Mike. When, when Harvick put that bumper up against the 48 going down the back, and remember, boys have at it. 
I guarantee you that's the first thing that went through Jimmy Johnson's mind. I'm messing with Kevin Harvick here, and boys have at it just came into my mind. I think that had a big effect on how he got in that third turn and where Kevin Harvick was able to make that pass. Larry, none of the top three finishers took tires or stopped on that final caution. Well, I think they all were friends with each other. When we had eight cars that stayed out, I went, okay, I think for these guys up front, that's going to be just fine. Obviously, those guys that took tires, like Matt Kenseth, who finished fourth, didn't just needed more laps to get up there. I think back to Kevin Harvick. He started the season off with the engine failure, finished 42nd at Daytona, and they have had a lot of problems on pit road with this 29 team, but obviously you could hear it in his voice. They prevailed today, the call that was made at the end to stay out, and now, as you said, five races, five different winners. Delane is not here today, and I'm thinking maybe giving a call home and uh, seeing how she liked his uh, little effort there at the end of the day. Well, that was one for the ages. Probably the most exciting race we've seen at Auto Club Speedway. After all the excitement of this, um, we're going to have to rest up for Martinsville. <laughs> Chris? Well, Harvick, Mike, I'm sure guys will be celebrating. Uh, great move by him, Jeff Hammond. What, is there anything else Jimmy Johnson could have done? You know, I, I think he probably did all he could because, again, I think what he, uh, Kevin Harvey kind of pointed out and Daryl and all the guys were talking about, this is Kevin Harvey you're messing with. And if you're not careful, if you try to throttle out of it, maybe mess him up getting down in the corner, he was probably going to spin you out. The only other thing maybe Jimmy could have maybe tried, and I'm sure he'll be thinking yeah. about it all night long, is maybe drove it into the bottom a little different and made it slide up in front of Kevin and tried to right. throw a little bit more of a block on him. But, again, you run the risk of getting wrecked. It was three for the road. It was uh, Kyle Busch. Then we thought it was Jimmy Johnson and in the end Kevin Harvick. But let's check in with uh, Jimmy Johnson. Matt Yoakum is standing by. What an e-ticket finish for Jimmy Johnson. How would you describe that run between yourself and Harvick? It reminded me of last year in the spring race, you know? Um, just couldn't hold him off that time. Those tires you know, made the difference. Um, I knew he was coming. I could hear him. You know, they said he was coming. If I could have maybe got by the 18 a lap sooner, um, it might have been enough to, to give me the margin I needed. But uh, just way loose, man. I was driving my butt off to try to keep the slow Chevrolet up in front. But it uh, didn't pan out. I hate losing him coming off of four like that. But uh, you know, we did everything we could today. I had a great race. Made our car a lot better all day long. So I'm, I'm really proud about that. So. And yes, Ron Malik, did you get in the fence? Yeah, there's one time off the of two. I was chasing the 18 and I got crossed up and smacked the fence. So, uh, man, I was dead sideways all day. Even when I was tight, I was still loose. So, uh, just glad, glad it turned out to be a decent day. Impressive and fun to watch run by Jimmy Johnson, second here in Fontana. A great finish as we check the results here. Uh, it, it seemed like. Jeff, that Jimmy thought, Kevin, there was some confusion on the tires taken by Harvick. No, Kevin didn't come in. And Kevin, Jimmy Johnson, Kyle Busch, the only guy in the top five that came down pit road was Matt Kenseth. He did take two tires. Pole sitter Juan Pablo Montoya said he was interested in points racing. Pretty good points day. Dale Earnhardt Jr. up there, not in the top ten. Tony Stewart who ran second, stayed out early, thought, thought he was going to be in the finish. Yeah, there's something happened to that 14 car at the beginning. He was a factor all day, top five runner all day long, winds up 13th. Kyle Busch led the most laps in this race, 151. Denny Hamlin, who had the valve train problem, as you talked about earlier in the recap, Jeff, led 15 laps. Tony Stewart led 11. Trevor Bain uh, touching the wall early and then later running into the wall, the Daytona 500 winner, and rounding out the unofficial results for a dramatic ending here, the Auto Club 400, powered by Coca-Cola. No, it really was, Chris. I mean, it was one of those races that looked like it was going to go entirely Joe Gibbs' way, but they were finally going to get their first Sprint Cup win here after a great finish by Kyle Busch and win on Saturday, but it just didn't happen. And I know it's only one race, but remember Kevin Harvick started the year saying the phone security code, he changed it to 4848 to remind him of chasing down the five-time champ, the Dominator. He did today. And we have a lot more post-race coverage live from California where Kevin Harvick led one lap, the most important one. We welcome you back to the Auto Club 400. Tony Stewart ran second with a chance to win, but wound up 13th and frustrated afterwards, as you can see inside the car. He was on live with us on the pre-race show. His last win came here at this track last October. Didn't feel like uh, talking about the way this one wound up. 
for his race team. And uh, he's a passionate driver. He's a former champion. He's a guy who, remember earlier in the year, had that second place uh, finished, uh, didn't like that, uh, felt he had a car that could win today. Well, again, I think what you're looking at here, it matters to Tony Stewart. I mean, Darrell Walter talks about winning. That's what this man is all about. He wants to win. He knows he's had some fast race cars. And, and Chris, when you have a fast race car and you mess it up or you miss an opportunity, it does not sit well. I understand that. I've lost races like that. And you will go to bed tonight not going to sleep because of it. And it just frustrates you. For Tony, it's double the problem. He's the owner's he's the driver. Owner and the driver's got, he's got nobody to call. There's a lot weighing on his mind. Uh, let's check in here on uh, Kyle Busch, who wound up third. It looked like he had the race in hand. Well, Kyle, uh, you had a great race car today. As you came across the start-finish line, I heard you say sorry. Why did you say that to your boys? Uh, it's just you give it up, you know, and um, we gave the race away today, unfortunately. Just uh, we seem to be losing the hand a little bit, two runs from the end, and then especially that last, that last set of tires. We just didn't quite have what it took in order to keep the front end under the car and then the back end under the car on the exits of the corners. Just uh, couldn't get the right speed that I needed. But the guys did a great job this weekend. I mean, the Interstate Batteries Camry was, was good from, from when we unloaded the second one uh, yesterday. And so uh, I can't say enough for that, about the guys on pit road, about the guys back at the shop. They did a great job for us and got us in position. And just unfortunately, I couldn't get the job done today. And, I uh, didn't have what it took there at the end. Well, Kyle, I heard you asking about the 48 behind you. Did you know that the 29 and the 48 uh, were gaining on you? Well, I mean, yeah, I can see them growing bigger in the mirror, so they were coming. And uh, I knew that the top was my best friend all day, all weekend. And when I got up there, it was just real tight. It just wouldn't turn, and I'd, I'd get in the fence almost. So I just had to slow the car down in the center of the corner uh, so I wouldn't get in the wall. And then when I would try to leave the corner, I'd be too loose, and those guys were just better. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah. In a backup car, he doesn't go back to back, but keeping it together. Meanwhile, for Kevin Harvick, three of his last five wins have come on last lap passes. Checking the points after five of 36 races that matter with the emphasis on winning. And Kevin Harvick showed you what that was all about. Carl Edwards, your leader, and Kurt Busch, who came in with that slight edge, had a rough day. He is currently third with Kyle Busch fourth. Yeah, I mean, even though he had a bad day, Kurt Busch is still hanging in there third in place. And right now, Kyle Busch has got to be somewhat happy. He's able to kind of like keep adding to those points. But the thing is right now, look at Kevin Harvick. He jumps all the way up into the top ten and ninth place in points. And the top ten is really the key because the, the, the two t drivers that get in, uh, regardless of points, it's about wins, which would mean that Jeff Gordon would jump up because of those guys outside of the top ten. He has a victory already. Those are the points to the moment. Let's check back in with Steve Burns, who's with the points leader. Well, Carl, uh, you guys really chased the racetrack today. You didn't have a great race car, but it seems like you just kept getting it a little bit better at a time. Didn't you say racing here was easy? I did not say that. That was not easy at the end. That, um, I'm glad I had a cushion, though, the last couple laps. I got to watch those guys, uh, got to watch them battle up there. Just an amazing finish. And we didn't run that well with our Aflac Fusion today, but, but the last run, no tires, was the best run we had. And to come out of here with the points lead going into my favorite racetrack, Martinsville, that's uh, that's nice to be able to come out here like that. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. Ryan Newman's fifth here in Fontana. What impresses you most about how this team has just performed, not only today, but the start of the season? Well, the, the, I guess the, the biggest thing was we overcame some bad pit stops, and uh, they were in a green, fortunately, but uh, uh, at least one, I know that was for sure. I shouldn't say two. Uh, but the guys did a good job. Uh, Tony Gibson made a great call and staying out. Um, just really proud of the U.S. Army Chevrolet, everybody at uh, Stewart Haas Racing, giving us the opportunity. And uh, unfortunately, Tony didn't get to finish it up the way he ran all day, but. Um, You'll have that as long as you still finish, man. You get to get the points. Ryan Newman fifth. All right. Matt Kedzeth wound up uh, fourth as uh, Kevin Harvick continues to celebrate. Harvick, again, one of seven drivers from the state of California, the most of any in this race today. How, how about uh, Kedzeth? A uh, nice little move there. A guy who's won here before and had success and certainly needed to make up some ground. Yeah. I, Larry Mack and Darrell Walter, they set it up about that last pit stop. Were you going to come or not? Carl Edwards was the last car to stay out. He really had an opportunity to move up. Well, Matt Kedzeth came down pit road, took on two tires. Great call right there by Jimmy Finnick to give him an opportunity to challenge right Right there and he was able to work his way back up to fourth I mean they weren't the fastest car all day long but they were right there and consistent con uh, consistently up in the top five and Brian Vickers uh, finished eighth so he's in the top ten it's a, it's a comeback story we talk about other sports of great proportion it's been well documented a guy who had a, a heart operation and there was some question at least in other people's eyes whether he should race again he's been back in the car certainly a great effort from him today he was high wide and handsome all day long well I saw it he got up there rim riding around he showed that he's back to true to form the team performed I think he 
did an outstanding job, and they finally got some luck to go with some pretty good run and be able to have a finish like they did. I think this is a kind of confidence booster that will really help this team as well as Brian Vickers as we go deeper in the season. He was moving like he was drinking Red Bull, and uh, <laughs> let's uh, check in with Brian Vickers. He's with our Dick Berggren. With Brian Vickers, your best finish in the comeback so far, an eighth-place finish. How do you feel about that? Well, <laughs> we wanted to win, <laughs> but uh, but you know I think everyone's pretty happy the way the way our luck's been. To be honest with you, we had a good car all day. We were competitive all day. We just couldn't quite get that last little bit of tight out of it to compete for the win. Um, there at the end, the restart, the 09 hurt us a lot. He spun his tires, uh, but that's all right. We came back. The guys did a great job in the pits. This is just what the Red Boy 83 team needed. It was just a good, solid day, especially the weeks we've been having lately. Congratulations. Even brighter days ahead. Thank you. Matt, when I talked to you at the end of the Bristol race, you said, I'm not really sure uh, how we got into the top five. How about today? Today was uh, the same but different. We were a little more competitive here most of the weekend. We just uh, were really fast when the track was green in the beginning. I mean, we drove right to the front, and as soon as the track got rubbered up, we just lost a handle on the car and just fought all day to get it back. So, um, again, they made great adjustments. The last lap was the farthest up in the running order that we were, uh, and it seemed like we really come out of it. And it just took us all, all day to kind of kind of find a home and get it better. So, um, pretty happy with our finish. You always want more. The first guy in tires, we were kind of running them down, but it was a good day for us. Thank you, Matt. Thanks. And we'll continue our live post-race coverage from the Auto Club 400, powered by Coca-Cola. Kevin Harvick, his first win since uh, last August. Uh, highlights and a lot more to come in just a moment. Promotional considerations provided by... Wild ride for Kevin Harvick, started 24th, fell to 28th, an overhead view of the last lap. Yeah, you see right there, he gets off a of turn two down the back straightaway, and Kevin talked about he learned from last year when he lost to Jimmy Johnson. He's pushing him down the back straightaway, setting him up, he rolls to the outside, he gets his car under him, he drives back to the throttle and gets position, and off of turn four, he's able to complete the pass and go on for the win. His owner said earlier this year, this is the year to kick Jimmy off that throne. That's Richard Childress Racing getting a W from Kevin Harvick, the only lap led in the race today. Tonight on Fox, The Simpsons, an all-new American Dad, Bob's Burgers, Family Guy, and more of American Dad. 7 Eastern, 6 Central, animation domination continues. And will Denny Hamlin, who had a rough ride today, continue his domination in Martinsville? That's where we'll be next Sunday, 1230 Eastern, 930 Pacific, in high definition. The pre-race show, delivered by Pizza Hut, gets things going on Sunday. And on Saturday, Major League Baseball is back on Fox and follows throughout the season, the All-Star break, League Championship, and World Series at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. And for more coverage of this race and Kevin Harvick's victory you can check in with our friends over at speed well fifth different winner this season in five races in fact the fifth different team to win this season and we leave here as Carl Edwards ahead of Ryan Newman in championship points that's only nine points the largest margin so far this season that's how tight things have been for TW Mike and Larry Krista Steve Dick and Matt Jeff Hammond I'm Chris Myers, our entire production crew, and special thanks to our researcher Patrick Perrin from the Hollywood Hotel and Lynn Mignani, who helps us all get home safely after each race. What a finish. That's cool, dude. <laughs> it was Kevin Harvick bumping aside Jimmy Johnson as Kyle Busch watched. And we thank you for watching. Have a great week. We'll see you next weekend on Fox.